Uh, good afternoon to uh, all our viewers and uh, listeners and welcome to the Mangaung Oval for this CSA Division 2 T challenge, T20 Challenge uh, match between the ITEC Knights and uh, Le Bobo. Alongside me I've got Vian Duplessis, uh, warm welcome to Vian, uh, and uh, myself is Aya van Wijk. Um, we'll we'll uh, cover the match for you guys today and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good day to play cricket here at Mangung Oval. Um, the temperature is expected to get up to 36 degrees. It's a beautiful day for cricket. We've got a good wicket. The wicket looks nice and hard, uh, quite flat. Uh, and we've got a gentle breeze uh, going across the ground uh, from the main pavilion side over to the Rappi Stadium side. Um, Looking forward to, uh, for this uh, T20 Vian. Yeah, I uh, welcome to you as well. Welcome to our viewers once again. Uh, the news from the middle is the iTech Knights won the toss. They have decided to bowl first, and um, I do think it's a good good decision. I think it's difficult to uh, to defend here at the Mangong Oval. The wicket looks a belter, so um, I do think it one might have been the right call, but only time will tell. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've got. Um We've got uh, we've got a strong Knights team who, uh, who only needs to win two more games in this T T Twenty Challenge, and they've got a guaranteed promotion back into Division One. So a very exciting game today for the Knights, and we're going to have Tian van Vieren uh, opening the bowling from the Lock Logan end, uh, and uh, yeah, we're excited to get this uh, this contest underway. Yeah, the opening batters for the Limpopo Impalas is Liam Peters and Cesar Masondu. Uh, Here we go. Even. Good hard length, quite straight. Uh, Liam Peters hits it into a vacant, uh, but wicked area and he picks up two runs there. Yeah, that's to be seen as a top of the table clash this. The Limpopo Impala is the top of the table at this stage. Uh, just to keep in mind they have two games in hand uh, above the Knights at this stage. They've only played two games. So much anticipated encounter this one at the Mongo Oval. Fafirin from the low Logan end. It's a hard length, top of off stump and Liam Peters takes a scampered single to Muron. As uh, Siswe Masondu will uh, face his first ball. That's a quick single taken here in the power play, especially T20 cricket nowadays. Um, tempo of the game really high and the intensity, especially in the power play, has been exceptionally high in the last couple of years, especially the, as the game has evolved to a much quicker tempo. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think um, it's all about Vian, isn't it? It's all about facing the team who faces normally, the, who faces uh, you know, the least amount of dots. Uh, that's going to be your team that, uh, as a batting unit, who, who finishes on top. Um, I think especially today, where you have big, big boundaries, uh, being the biggest playing field in the country, you know, to keep that run rate going is going to be very important in between boundaries. Oof. Shoulders and arms there by Masson. It didn't look like he picked up the ball. Uh, from fear he had quite a hard length. Uh, Masson just uh, left that ball to hit his body and uh, scamper through to it for a leg bar. Yeah, oh, yeah, it didn't look like he knew too much about that one. Uh, it's uh, some good pace being generated here by Van Vieren, hitting the deck nice and hard. Field being set here for Liam Peters, uh, left hand batteries. We've got a second slip in there with Dane Pitt. And uh, third man out, uh, deep square out, there's the two mandatory fielders in the power play from Fearin from the Lock Logan end. That was a hard length ball, I must say. First couple of balls, the, wickets look, the wicket does look pretty good. Uh, good carry, pace and bounce. was earlier down at the wicket. Uh, Vian, did you maybe take a look at the wicket yourself? I was down there early on. Um, I don't think there's too much in it for the bowlers at this stage. Um, not a lot of grass coverage on it, so I can't see a lot of sideways movement. Maybe slightly slow, but I, I can't see anything happening out there. Yeah, just as you said, it's quite flat. They take out the slip, 
put it put it put him into uh, more protection at that wicket and it looks like fine leg is gonna go out uh, so they bring up third man uh, looks like a quite obvious ploy here maybe gonna quite a uh, bowl straight to finish this first over out um, as the Limbopa and Paulas is four for zero with two balls to go in this over wild bouncer down big for a wide good take there by the keeper who's gone at all got it all. Uh, he's had an impressive season so far. He's been explosive with the bat, especially the white ball stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's good to see Garnet stepping up uh, the season. Um, and uh, yeah, as as hopefully as the nights will go up, I think Garnet will be a, a prominent feature in Division One cricket. Uh, he was a very promising schoolboy schoolboy player so it's so uh, as uh, Van Feeren gets flicked for six over the head of fine leg uh, Van Feeren uh, straying a bit straight there down leg and a great shot by Liam Peters to get his uh, the first uh, to get the first boundary underway excuse me that's a beautiful shot by Peters off the legs clip between the the two fielders out on the leg side the two fielders as I mentioned earlier is deep square leg slightly in front of square and there is a deep fine leg in place as well. So an obvious ploy to uh, not leave the stumps at this stage by Van Vieren. Van Vieren to finish the first over out of the match. He bowls from Lock Logan in Peters facing. Good odd length ball beating uh, Liam Peters on the bottom edge. Um, and uh, that's the first over done. The Limpopo and Palace 11 uh, without loss of the one over. We're quickly going to go through the team sheets for today as we have the iTech Knights. Um, like we said previously, they have, a, they have a pretty big D batting lineup, and I think because of their batting strength, they did elect to bowl first today, um, as they did a week ago against the SWD Badgers, uh, winning that home game quite comfortably. Uh, the iTech Knights, um, Isaac De Gale, Garnetar, Jock Simon, Aubrey Swanepoel, who's captain as well, Tian van Vieren, Dian Forrester, Pat Puerta, Gian Kluter, Sitembile Langa, and uh, Dane Pete and Nipo Mpanguse. Uh, Garnetar will be the Knights uh, keeper today. And uh, at uh, Limpopo Mpala's team, uh, we've got uh, Siswe Musondu, Liam Peters, Lauren Sienkamp, Ruana Osbroek, Wasani, Mashana, uh, Morai Venter, Daniel van der Merwe, Don Radebe, Eldred Hawken, Jess, uh, Jesse James Albani, uh, Hadiso Malefe, uh, and that's your playing 11 for the Limpo Bowen Ballas. Now the Knights going with spin up front, yeah? That's a good ploy and something to be expected. The number of spinners in the lineup today is Jacques Neyman, the Proteus capped Jacques Neyman. Rolling from the commentary box end. Yeah, normally uh, from uh, from the Willows end towards uh, the Lock Logan end, uh, the ball does tend to stay low and hurry through, and I think that's why the ploys to ball spin from the Willows end as Peter's chip one chips one to uh, long off for one run. Yeah, it's Patrick Berta doing the fielding down at long off. An old hand, if you have to say it, at the, at the Free State Cricket Union. Yeah, Pat Puerta, he comes with a heap of experience. Just to add to that uh, batting death of the Knights, um, as I uh, mentioned earlier, um, big strength of the Knights is their batting death. As uh, Siswe Masson, who tickled one day down leg, and uh, the batters uh, run through for three runs. It looks like Jacques Neyman's putting some nice work on the ball. Not quite finding his radar so far, but it seems to be some good work on the ball. It looks like the ball's dipping, a bit of move in the air as well. Oh, we've got, uh, the, we still here in the, the, the mandatory power play, which is uh, for the duration of the first six overs, as that ball skittles through. That's going to be your danger, batting at the Lock Logan end today. Um, as we have a deep mid-wicket and a long off for the left-hander. Jock Simon uh, trying to squeeze a couple of dots here up front. Peters hits one too long off uh, for another single. 
Slightly dragged down by Snowman. That I might feel that he missed out on that one. But as mentioned earlier, the pro tiers of spinner Dane Pete also in the lineup today, as well as the mystery spin of Aubrey Swanepoel. Yeah, I think uh, Vian on this, uh, as, as the second over is concluded, uh, Impala's 18 for zero after two. Ex uh, I think we can expect uh, a, bit, a bit of spin bowling today. As we mentioned earlier, at, uh, the Mangung Oval is one of the biggest uh, playing areas in the country. Um, and with, with the nature of the pitch, which looks for today uh, quite flat and low, um, we might see a bit of pace off as uh, as we saw against the SWD Badgers uh, outside of the power play. The bowling teams did tend to go pace off using the big boundaries to their advantage. Uh, as we see a bowling change here for the Knights from the Lock Logan end, it's Sitin Billy Lango who, uh, who had a very good four day uh, competition. He comes into the attack uh, and he will bowl the third over. Uh, to starting to face, uh, starting, sorry, excuse me, facing is Liam Peters. Wanga bowling with a deep square and a fine leg out around the wickets. Oh, that's a great shot. That's a beautiful shot by Peters. Wanga with a slight loose neck coming wide of the crease, slightly over pitch on the offside, and beautifully put away by Peters. Yeah. Was like uh, not a bad shot at all there by Liam Peters. Uh, ploy is obviously to cramp him with this field with a deep square and a fine leg out, not to leave maybe the stumps on the offside. But Peters was quickly to bounce on that uh, whole volley out, uh, outside off. Almost like a throw down there to start off your session. Yeah, yeah. and that puts uh, that puts Langa under pressure. It's his first ball of the over. As he, uh, as he bowls a second ball to Peters, that's more like at good hard length, top of the stumps, and they take a scampered single. Oh, the burly figure of Langa looks like he hits the deck quite hard. Seems to maybe rush the batters for a little bit more pace than they expect at times. Looks like he bowls a good hard length, moves the ball around. Yeah, sitting Billy Langa, he's a very talented bowler. Uh, quite short in, 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 in stature, so he will, he will rush you, but he also has the ability to, to swing the ball through the air. Uh, we all know this, this new Kuka white ball these days, they don't swing that much. Maybe the first two overs, as Langa bowls his first ball to Masondu. Yeah, that's a good shot. Good hard length, Masondu was up to the challenge, he punches him over mid on uh, for more. Uh, good and exciting start here from the Limpopo Impalas. But as mentioned earlier, I, uh, I, I think it's a, it's a difficult one to bat first here at the Mangung over. We never quite know how much is enough to win the game here. Yeah, that's a great point, Vian. And I also think with the big playing dimensions, away teams, they normally struggle here. You need to know your angles when fielding. It's difficult to cut off twos and it's a blitz outfield. So with that comes the trick of uh, you know, how many off do you need to be from the boundary? Um, and like you said, Vian, um, the batting first year, you never know how much is enough. And with the batting experience from the Knights, uh, I think the, uh, the Impalas must back themselves to get as many as possible. As third man comes up, long on goes out, we've got a deep square. Langa from the Lock Logan end, base off, but unfortunately a wide down leg. Now Langa definitely under a bit of pressure here early on in his spell. And it's um, kudos has to go to the Mpopo and Paula's batters so far. They've really come out with good intent. And they've put the Artec Knights bowlers under some pressure early on. Yeah, Langa not the start he was hoping for. Uh, but uh, as you said, beyond good batting here from the Impala. They showing good intent. The wicket looks good. It's normally a good new ball wicket for batters at the Mangung Oval. Fairly straight delivery punched uh, Armasondu down the ground to Long One for one. Yeah, the over really won already by the Limpopo Impala, so I think Langa try is trying to get out of the over without too much further damage. Dropping back Long On as the left handed Peters comes back on strike. Looks like fine leg and deep square leg goes out.
yeah, two balls to go in this over. The Knights will just look to close off this over as it's already quite expensive going for 11 uh, after four deliveries. Langa from the lock low at the end. He's bowling the fifth ball off the over. Good odd length delivery. Peters punches it to uh, long off for one run. Yeah, if you're just joining us now, the score 30 for no loss off the 2.5. And the Limpopo and Palas, I think they'll be rather happy with their start so far. Yeah, good start here from the Impalas. Um, I think they identified the, the best time to score here at the Mangunga Oval is during the power play. The ball is hard and new, it skids through. The wicket does look quite abrasive today. Uh, maybe a bit lower than, than the match against SWD a week ago. It's uh, Langa bowls the last ball of the over. That's four more, that's a great shot uh, by Siswe Masondu. The offside field is up. Langa over pitched slightly. And uh, that's a great shot by Masondu. Three overs bowled. The Limapopo Balas is 34 without loss after three overs. Now oh, the Impalas are off to a flyer here at the Mangoing Oval. But I oh, yeah, have to give some credit to the ground staff as well. The outfield looks a carpet and a real reward for some good shots so far here from the Limpopo Impala batters. Yeah, it's, uh, it's normally a quick outfield here at Mangoing Oval. Uh, there's always been a, a saying when, uh, when, when players come to Bluefontein you put your bowling and fielding spikes away and it looks no different today. It looks a flat wicket, uh, outfield is nice and fast, we've got a big playing surface. Uh, I think uh, the trick for the bowling teams will, do, will, will be to get through the power plays as that's the best time to score. We did see, however, a, lot, a week ago against SWD as the ball gets slightly older and you take pace off, uh, it, it can get dif more difficult to score with your five fielders outside of the ring. As we see another bowling change here from the Willows end, Nippon Panguse, uh, he's going to open his bowling account uh, and he will be bowling to uh, Liam Peters. Yeah, Panguse, he's, he's, he's been exciting so far, he's bowled some good, good clicks. He's, uh, he's had the spectators on the edge of their seat so far on this T20 competition, well this season especially, he's, been, he's had a good one, I think he's been exciting and uh, I think he's been the guy to throw the ball to when you need a breakthrough. He's opening his account to Liam Peters, he bowls a hard length, Peters pulls it to deep square, good field set here for Mpungusi, he likes to run in and hit the deck hard, got two square fielders in, in deep square and, and deep point. Um, yeah, I agree Vian, I think Mpungusi, he He's had a good season, just heard during the week that he has been pulled up again to the, uh, to the National Academy for the winter program. So uh, very, very pleased for a young man uh, as, uh, as his role is quite simple. He runs in, he eats a hard length um, and he doesn't complicate it too much. And it, it must be said that the Division Two teams has been struggling uh, to, uh, to, to face him uh, as he bowls his first ball to, uh, and Masundu just steps away there maybe some interference uh, it's something it's, uh, it's been a trend lately is the doing away with the traditional fine leg and third man field in the power play rather putting your players in a position to, to cover the good shot rather than the edges uh, especially in the power play as we see deep point and deep square leg out for Mpongu, so who now continues to Masondu. Oh, it's a bit of shape away there from uh, Mpongu, and uh, that's uh, it's a wide. Uh, yes, I agree. We are, over the last couple of years, we have seen a lot of uh, deep points, especially in, in, in your power play. I think that's, in, that's just encouraging for the bowler to keep on hitting a good hard length, trying to the splice off the bat in a power play, as the batters will look to try and go hard down the ground in a power play. Uh, another wide day from Punguse, struggling with his radar here up front. A little bit of a commentator's curse here, myself and I are talking up Punguse so far. Mm -hmm. 
Gusa now continues to Masondu. Odd leaf, down leg, another wide at three wides in a row. This is not the start the Knights was hoping for. With that being said, it is the best time to score uh, at Mangung Oval. It's, it's against a hard new ball. It always just uh, reacts better from the deck. It does get more tricky. Pace off towards the end with five fielders out. That's going to be the trick for, uh, for, for both batting teams trying to maintain the momentum from the, from the power play. As um, Bungi said, another hard length delivery. Masondo just tickles it to that a deep square for, uh, for one run. Um, Pungusi under a bit of pressure early on here in his spell. Only two legal deliveries bold. Already gone for the five runs and he'd like to minimalize the, the damage in this over. I do imagine Peters will look to capitalize on the start and look to take down Pungusi. Bouncer and oh, we drop catch a deep square. Very uncommon for this experienced Knights fielding team. It's, it looks like Gian Kluter dropped the catch there, deep square. It's exactly what he was set for. Mbanguse likes to run in and hit, hit a hard length. That was a well directed bouncer. And Peters, uh, he uh, it looked like he towed that one and it went straight to deep square and a lost opportunity for the Knights there. shot there from Sondre that's in front of deep point uh, John Clutter do, does well there to cover the boundary nonetheless they get two more runs Nuts will be disappointed with that drop catch I must say they have been this over has been started uh, started uh, below par Vian and uh, to, to, uh, to continue on the trend of, of dropping a catch there at deep square uh, they would hope that that's, uh, that's not going to cost them dearly Not a hard length delivery. Sondu again, he doesn't look comfortable with that uh, length. Van Fieren did hit him on the body and it looked like he was happy for the ball to hit his body there again. Good keeping by Garner Tarr. One ball to go for this in this fourth over. Already went for eight. Dropped opportunity. Important ball you would feel this is. Pungusi now to finish out the over, he goes to Maswondu. Hard length. I think the Knights identified Maswondu is not comfortable with the short stuff here. And uh, well, you must say that three illegal deliveries. Uh, I think um, Pungu said it well to only go for eight runs in this over. It's Limpopo and Paul, I say 42 without loss after four. Good start here for him. As uh, another bowling change uh, from the Lock Logan end, and it looks like Dion Forrester, Tian van Vieren, excuse me, uh, he will come back into the attack after his first over off the match that uh, that went for ten. Yeah, somewhat uncharacter uncharacteristic start so far by the Knights. Limpopo and Paul is 42 for no loss after four. Seven extras already for the night. Something you don't usually see from this experienced lineup as we see from Fieren into Peters. Pull and strike delivery. This over starts with a dot. I do agree, Vian. Uh, quite, uh, quite ill disciplined start, and uh, that's included with a drop catch. Um, as as Paulos is off to a good start, it does look a good pitch. And if it's uh, good fast scoring conditions like today, you want to be taking your chances to restrict the scores. Fafiran from the Lock Logan and he's bowling to Peters. Hard length delivery, spliced to deep square. They're pushing for two. Good fielding there on the deep square. Boundary as Longa keeps it down to only one run. Yeah, and the, the Knights would have wanted some early wickets. I think early wickets in the power play is what you want. It will be the call as well from the Limpopo and Paulas when the Knights come out to bat uh, later on with Tar and Stayman probably going to be the two power play openers. But uh, a wicket here will bring Lorenz Tienkamp and Juan Hasbrook to the wicket, the two experienced, the two mainstay batters of the Limpopo and Paulas and, 
And they've been good so far. Yeah, then coming into the crease now is, is a perfect situation for both of them. As Van Vieren balls from the lock again and Andy's balling to Masondu. Beaten for pace again. Masondu does not look comfortable with this hard length deliveries. It looked like a bit of thigh pad on the way through. Half a shout. Um, but uh, definitely Masondu not too comfortable with the ball back of a length. It does look like the iTech Knights bowlers have identified that they need to keep it out of his half of the wicket. Oh, from fear and bowling here yeah. with a deep point and a deep square again third man fine leg up uh, it looks like he's going to try and need a hard length Masondu the player is up is left up to him to make the decision he takes it on spliced again and another dot Knights pulling it back slightly yeah you can feel that's actually the ball hit Masondu flush on the helmet there and we're going to have a concussion assessment and once again back of a length delivery pro uh, proving the problem here for Masondu and uh, it does look like he might be in a bit of trouble there looked like it went off the top edge or maybe off the glove into the, the helmet medical staff attending to him now And if you're just joining us now, the Itec Knights won the toss and they elected to bowl first here at the Mangong Oval. Beautiful weather for some cricket here on the Sunday in Bloemfontein. And uh, the Limpopo Impala is off to a flyer, the 43 for no loss off to 4.4. And a very good over so far, this is the fifth over by Tian van Vieren. Proper, proper, typical bloom Sunday, hot and dry, uh, gentle breeze going across the ground just to cool off the players slightly. And uh, it's the CSA Division 2 T -T -T T20 Challenge match between the ITEC Knights and the Lipopo and Palas. ITEC Knights have uh, only have to one, win two more T20 uh, Challenge matches. To be secured and guaranteed promotion towards back into Division One, that will be good for cricket South Africa. Division One cricket back back in bloom, uh, and uh, must say it's a well deserved. They've had a, a consistent season so far, um, but it's it's um, Paulus off to a good start, yeah. Yeah, and it's I think cricket South Africa needs a central South African franchise back in Division One. I think it's a, it's a good pipeline for South African cricket. I think with the schooling system we have in, in the Free State, two of the top cricketing schools in the country in Bloemfontein, as well as the University of the Free State, uh, as well back in U but University cricket in the top two, top three in the last two editions of the USA competition. So definitely there is a need for a central South African franchise to be in Division I, are you? No, I totally agree, Vian. Uh, when we think back, uh, if we think about uh, all the players that has has come from this strong franchise and how competitive they they've been over the years, uh, it uh, it was sad it was sad to see this past season that the Knights missed out in Division One cricket. But it's uh, it, you know one thing you do when your backs are against the wall is you make the correct decisions and. With that, the Knights got some reinforcements, good young players in this season, a healthy culture, and uh, it's uh, look you don't you never wanna you never wanna jinx it. But if if the Knights can get it back into Division One cricket, there's only only benefits to reap from that. He's uh, from Fearin, balls from the Lock Logan, and he pitches it up this time to Masondu, who takes a scampered single. Yeah, it does look like Masondu's had enough, a bit of a shot and anger down the ground there by Masondu. It'll be interesting to see how the Knights go about it uh, from here on end, as uh, Masondu clearly displayed, he, he struggles with the back of the length delivery. The, the Knights does have the luxury of Dame Pitt for the middle overs, who is incredible, uh, incredibly experienced and uh, also with that obviously skillful. Uh, who will always, on a big field like this, just bring the run rate a bit back from Fearin, from the Lock Logan into Peters. 
He eats it out to deep square, they push for two, and uh, that's an easy two run for Liam Pires. Again, back of a length, slight splice into, uh, into the deep square uh, area, as that is the fifth over con concluded. The Popo Impalas, 46 without zero. Very important uh, last over of the power play here, yeah, so the Popo Impalas will look uh, to uh, get the maximum uh, amount of runs out of this power play. But, uh, that can also go towards the other side. If the Knights can get a good over here, the momentum you would feel uh, is back into their favour with, uh, with some good quality spinners in the, in the form of Dan Pitt for the middle overs. Yeah, good, good previous over there by Tian van Vieren, just maybe wrestling back the momentum a bit for the Knights. As Mpongo Serie comes in again, Masondu works it into the leg side. Yeah, I feel that was a lost opportunity for the Knights. Clear, clearly visible, Masondu is not happy with the, with the short pitch stuff. That was an easy let off for Masondu, uh, quite full. Takes a scamper single into the leg side, and now uh, the more handy Liam Peters is on strike to try and uh, get the maximum amount of runs out of this last over of the power play. Bonguse from uh, the Willow's end. Back of a length delivery, it's a straight to mid on. It does look like it's been a bit more challenging when the ball's been pitched back of a length. Maybe a bit of two-paced nature of the wicket perhaps playing a role yeah definitely Vian with the heat we experienced over this last two weeks in bloom uh, that's going to be always be the trick to keep the moisture in the wickets and it does look like uh, does look like we have a, a deep mid wicket going out now as well and deep point coming back into the ring as we have a deep square and a deep point Bongusi I think this is not going to be in a batsman's half by the looks of it it's a hard length. Peters expected it. And he pulled it straight to deep square. Almost an action replay of his dropped catch earlier by Gian Kluter. This time around, he takes a good catch, and that's the end of Liam Peters. Yeah, and a very good opening partnership comes to an end. Liam Peters scoring 22 runs of 18 deliveries. He's got his team off to a flyer. But oh, you have to think that the last couple of overs, the scoring rate has come down a bit. And I think it's been maybe the Knights bowlers summing up conditions, maybe bowling better areas. Um, I don't imagine the wicket changing too much. Yeah, it, uh, it will be interesting to see. I think with the heat of today, it might get a touch lower and slower. Um, as, we, as you mentioned, Vian, it looks like it's slightly too paced. And uh, it was evident in the, in the previous over actually from Tian van Vieren, which just pulled the momentum back towards the Knights' side. As we have three balls to go now in this uh, last over of the power play, Loden Sien come to the crease for the Limpopo and Palace. It will be interesting to see how he approaches this. Will he try and score off this last three balls in the power play or will he, will he try and settle himself? Yeah, Loden Sien come. Uh one of, the, one of the chief destroyers for the batting lineup here for Limpopo and Palas. Definitely a key aspect of their lineup. And I had, it has to be said, we're playing one of the two, two middle strips. It takes a good baseballer to clear the square where we could hear at the Mangong Oval. It's definitely back of a length, a good ploy. And uh, you can even middle the ball and you won't even clear the fence. So it's a good ploy by the ITEC Knights bowlers in the last couple of overs. Lauren Sienkamp to face his first ball from uh, Nipo Mpunguse, he's bowling from the Willows end. This is the fourth ball of the sixth over. Mpunguse, he's it's a hard length, fairly straight. Lodenstein come off the mark with a scampered single into the leg side, as uh, uh, Jack Simon really needed to work hard there to uh, prevent overthrows. Yeah, I agree, Vian. I think what we'll see a lot of in the middle overs is space off into the wicket. Um, and perhaps maybe even the variation will be pace on uh, for, for, for batters to hit towards the square boundaries um, as that is uh, on both sides as we're playing in a middle strip so both sides is fairly big square as uh, Masondu takes a, a scampered single to short fine uh, Dane Peter fielder there 
and uh, yeah, just in general, pace off in the middle overs, hitting the uh, wicket quite hard. It's even working now on the power play with a square field being set. I think that uh, we can expect that pretty much uh, for the rest of the afternoon. And also, like you said, Bjorn, it just looks like some balls are shooting through and other balls, uh, other balls is just holding up a touch. Panguse, he bowls another good directed bouncer, top edge, over short fine, but unlucky there. As Lauren Sienkop takes uh, takes two runs in, that's the end of the power play. The Popo and Paulas, they are 51 uh, for the loss of one wicket, that wicket of Liam, Peter, uh, Liam, uh, uh, Liam Peters, and uh, six overs being bowled here. Yeah? That means uh, that that's the end of the mandatory power play. Uh, five fielders can be outside the ring now. And uh, it looks like uh, we can expect a bowling change from the Lock Logan end. And it looks like Dane Pitt straight into the attack. The Knights are not going to wait uh, to pull back the scoring rate. Yeah, I think this is a good decision, Bjorn. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a decent power play. I think it's, it's still in the balance. The score now 51 for one after six. And uh, oh yeah, I, I can't imagine a, a double change being too far off. I'd imagine if they didn't pitch that side, they might go to August one pull this end. Maybe even bring Jacques Neyman back or um, convince Pat Boerta to roll over his arm for a few as well. No, definitely. I think pace off in general with these big boundaries is a good ploy. Uh, Pete, he's going to bowl from the Lock Logan end. He's bowling with Adam at wicket five. Basic fielders on the boundary starting with a gentle long hop. Uh, which gets hit by Lauren Sienkamp to uh, one run for one run to uh, to uh, deep at wicket. Sorry, that was uh, Sizwe Masondu. Pete bowling with a general field of five fielders on the boundary. Vacant mid wicket. He's got two points and a short fine leg. Hard length into the wicket. Sponged down the ground by Sienkamp towards long off. And oh, yeah, yeah, going back to the field, it's something that's come across quite, quite more, or more frequently the last couple of years is spinners bowling with Adam wicket. That's of course to counter the sweeps and reverse sweeps and laps that the game has, has gotten to its arsenal. I saw him with a drop and run into the offside. It's good running there by the Mpopo Impalas. Yeah, scampered single taken there also by Masondu. Yes, yeah, I think. It's always a trick between uh, covering the boundary uh, in, in the reverse sweep or maybe squeezing another dot to mid-wicket. Uh, that is where I feel your sweeper as a spinner is quite important. He's not really a catching fielder. Uh, he's not really a fielder who's, who's going to take a, a lot of catches, but he is there. You can position him to, to save the reverse sweep as an off-spinner. A lot of balls aren't uh, expected to go to sweeper anyway, um, so you can use your your sweeper as a as a potential kind of uh, defensive option for the for uh, you call it a block option for the reverse sweep. As uh, Pete, he's uh, concluding his over from the Willows end, conservatively played by Masondu into the vacant but wicked area, and that's the end of Pete's first over. Uh, which only conceded five runs and immediately uh, a big hole to the scoring rate, Vian. I think the Popo and Paulus might have identified that Dane Pitt might be one of the main threats here from a bowling perspective of the Itech Knights, especially uh, the recently back in the protest lineup of spinner Dane Pitt, who had an incredible tour uh, of New Zealand. Yeah, he's back into South African cricket and domestic cricket. I think the Limpopo and Palas might have identified that they can maybe sit on him on his end and try and just work him for as many as possible without losing too much wickets and keep some wickets in hand and maybe launch at the back end as we see Aubrey Swanepoel, uh, right arm mystery spin as they, they call him, in from the Willows end. Is yeah, him? you call it Vian double change here for the Knights. Uh, completely, uh, they've completely taken pace off. Aubrey, he bowls, uh, he bowls in between leg cutters, off cutters and seam up deliveries. I think he'll be targeting the stumps from the Willow's end as you see. I think that might have been a leg cutter or an outswinger. 
I'd like to be out the front of the hand first up here from Swanepoel. He's generally a bit quicker through the air. Yeah, that's what Swanepoel is going to give you. He's going to he's going to bowl fairly straight as Masandu takes one too long off. Uh, the whole the field on this on this instance. I think it can be tricky facing a bowler like him, especially if you're batting at the Lock Logan end with. The majority of the cracks that side, uh, you can expect a couple of balls to shoot through and stay low. Vacant mid wicket as well here for Swanepoel. Uh, he's bowling to Lauren Steenkamp. Fairly straight again. Out of the front of the hand again, like Leon said, and Steenkamp takes a scamp at single into the offside. I think this middle period is going to be vital to determine the outcome of the match, uh, especially with the big square boundaries. It's going to be difficult to take down the spinners. It's gonna it take a big hit to clear the fences here in Bloemfontein as Swanepoel continues now to Masondu. Good delivery, fairly straight. Masondu takes another single. I completely agree, Vian. Uh, there is a saying coming to Mangung Oval uh, with white ball cricket: the team that bats it the best in the middle overs, they tend to uh, they tend to win the game. And I think today is gonna be no different as Swanepoel con continues to load and see and cup. He eats the ball down. The ground for one run too long off. Oh, Swanepoel coming nice and tight to the stumps there. And uh, Wiley campaigner is Swanepoel. He's been around the block uh, before coming to the High Tech Knights. Northern Cape Heat captain for a couple of seasons as well. As Masondu works that one into the vacant with wicked region. It looks like they're pushing for a second, but some good work out on the fence. It looks like Pat Buerta patrolling the mid-wicket fence. <coughs> Keeps it down to one. Important ball off the over. Very good over so far from uh, Swanepoel. Only conceding six. Good ball there from uh, Swanepoel. Fairly straight. It's good use of the crease there by Lorenz Tienkamp. Going nice and deep back into the crease. Cutting it out towards the sweep on the offside. Keeping the strike. And it's, um, as you alluded to earlier, it's the team that faces the least amount of dot balls tend to win more games, especially in white ball stuff. And uh, I think the Pompo Impalas will look to just minimize the dot balls here in the middle passage. And uh, I think they'll look to launch it there. And they have a few guys that hits a long ball. Ron Asbrook hits the ball far. And Daniel van der Merwe, he's, uh, he's been explosive. Beats going to continue from the Lock Logan end. He bowls to Lorenz Sienkamp. Hard length delivery into the wicket. Sierkamp eats it into a vacant mid wicket for one run. Yeah, Vian, this uh, middle over passage is so crucial on a big field like today. You can't just uh, continue to tee off if you don't have the firepower. And again, space off it is quite difficult. Look to just go on with the arm there. But uh, I have to tell you, it looks like they're out there with a clear mindset, not taking risks against the spinners. I can't see too many unorthodox shots, if you like to call it that. As Masondu works that one into the midwicket region, it looks like they're pushing for a second. Stienkamp's going back for a second. And some excellent running there by Stienkamp. Good running, ball left on the edge of the circle ring. That's normally two runs on a big playing, playing field like today. Yeah. I'd, that's always a tricky part, Vian, to uh, to kind of, you know, put put the boundary shots away for this middle over middle over passage and to play low risk cricket. But you need to keep in mind that the Knights do have a lot of firepower in their batting, uh, and they might hit a couple of boundaries in this middle over passage as uh, as uh, Masondu takes uh, one run to uh, deep mid wicket. He did a mid wicket vacant, uh, in the vacant mid wicket area, excuse me. That's always going to be the balance between are you lo looking to try and score a boundary or do you cont continue to play low risk cricket? It does look like the Impalas are setting themselves up for the last eight or seven overs with wickets in hand. There's good running there by Lauren Senkamp. He takes two more runs to, uh, to long off. Yeah, I, I do think you can score at a good rate here at the Mangong Oval without taking risks. I think with the big outfield, there's a lot of twos on offer. As Pete continues now to Stian Kamp, who cuts it out into uh, acres of space on the offside. Work to be done on the offside fence. It looks like Van Fieren, who holds it back in. He was rather far in front of square there, is Van Fieren. 
He did look slightly out of position after nine overs. Limpopo and Paula stay are 70 for one as uh, Siswe Masondu and uh, Lauren Sienka building a good partnership here of 23. Yes, I agree, Vian. You need to know your angles here as a fielding team. A lot of uh, opportunities for two runs as the ball takes a while to get to the boundary fielder. It's always wonderful to continue now from the Willows end. Sondu to be on strike. He's sitting on 28, not out at this stage. Straighten at the pads. Pull towards deep square leg and Swanepoel lucky to get away with that one. Yeah, I'm not the, Swanepoel's best of deliveries. Being saved there with the deep square boundary for only one run. Swanepoel to continue here to uh, Lauren Sienka. He bowls it into the pads. Short fun, he gets down. Good fielding there from uh, Sitembele Langa uh, to restrict that only to one run. It does look like Swanepoel definitely has a clear plan to target the pads. And uh, force them to hit into the leg side. Nice and straight. Out of the front of the hand. Masondu, he leaves it on the inner rings uh, circle end, but only two runs. Good feeling from Dion Forrester. Good anticipation. Yeah, I think Dion bowling from the Willows end towards the Lord Logan end to bring the cracks into play. You need to hit the stumps. And that it looks like, oh, slow to see a He goes for a big hit, but not big enough. Oh, it looks like it looks like the catch has been taken by Pat Buerta. That's a terrific catch. Always tricky fielding here on the boundary at Mangung Oval. Uh, you don't want to be on the boundary edge uh, to concede two runs. Pat Buerta was five to ten meters off. Lawrence Sierkup took a big chance. He hit the ball out to cow corner, and uh, Pat Buerta did terrific work. He back paddled, took a catch above his head. Just in front of the bowling, uh, boundary rope. Great catch and that's a big wicket for the Knights at a crucial time. Yeah, Lorenz Tien come to part for a well played 14. He did look busy at the crease. Uh, you have to maybe question the, the option at this stage of the game. Heading towards one of the bigger pockets in this ground. Uh, I think he made good connection but as we alluded to earlier, it's one of the biggest corners in South African cricket, maybe in world cricket, heading it towards that corner. And an excellent catch there in the deep by Patrick Buerta. Yeah, exactly, Vian. That is the biggest pocket uh, at Mangung Oval. That's what I alluded earlier to. Uh, it's always difficult. Do you continue to play low-risk cricket or do you try and take a boundary option? Unfortunately for Lawrence Sienkamp, uh, he hit that ball straight to deep mid-wicket. Uh, he didn't try and hit it. Uh, meter left or right of him, uh, but a good catch there from Pat Buerta on the boundary. That was a close call as the new batter and captain of the Limpopo and Paula, good cricketer, Ruan Osbrook, he comes out to the crease. Very handy cricketer himself as he can bowl off spin as well. Uh, and he can be very dangerous at the end uh, of the innings as the Knights took out one uh, point and uh, he has gone into slip, still bowling without a vacant mid-wicket here is uh, Aubrey Swanepoel and uh, Ruan Osbrook to face his first delivery. Gentle full toss, that's into the gap. Pat Puerta, terrific fielding, he gets the ball on one bounce. Not the ideal first delivery to a new batter uh, there, Vian. Yeah, it, as a batter, your eyes tend to lit up with a nice juicy full toss first up, not what you'd be expecting. And uh, I've seen a lot of full tosses and long ups take more wickets than good balls. Good ball there from Aubrey Swanepoel. He, uh, he squeezes another dot to Masondu and that's the end of the 10th over. The Limpopo Impala stay 75 for two in the CSI T20 Division Two Challenge match. If you have just joined us, uh, it's a hot day here in Bloom. It looks like uh, run scoring is favourable for the batters. Vian, the Knights pulling it back nicely here with pace off. Yeah, the score now 75-2 of the 10 overs. And uh, the spinners bring it back nicely for the Itech Knights. As Dame Pitt now continues. Looks like he has Midwicket in place. He's taken out his point. And uh, rather... What he has, he had a third, short third man and a point. He's got to feel it between the two now. 
as he continues to Hasbrook. He's down on one knee and a wide signal down the leg side. Hasbrook, one of those players who likes, likes to take on the game, likes to put the bowlers under pressure. Oh, good ploy here from the Knights. You want to squeeze a couple of dots and force that shot from Ruan Hasbrook, who hasn't been at the crease for, for a long time. And after that shot being played, Pitt immediately takes out his mid-wicket. He squeezes him into another point. Pitt now to continue to Hasbrook. Hard length punched out towards deep extra cover, really. It does look like Van Feren is more in a deep extra cover region than a traditional sweeper fielder, which tends to be a bit more square on the offside. The left-handed from Feren, maybe something to do with it being him being left-handed. As Masondu works that one into the leg side. A lot of work to be done. Looks like Cluto does well. Comes in from the deep wicket fence. Good battle this between Hasbrook and Pete. Like you said, Bian, Hasbrook likes to take on the game. Pete eats. Oh, that's a good shot. Pete bowled a hard length. Hasbrook rocked back. That's a very, that's a terrific shot from the back foot, past the bowler, straight as a die in uh, into the side screen boundary. That's four run for Ruan Hasbrook. That's an impressive shot. That's some serious power shown there by Hasbrook. Back of a length ball just rocks back slightly with a short arm jab past the bowler into a really long straight boundary for four. After that, after that shot, Pete takes all the pace off. Experienced campaigner. Hasbrook tending to hit it a bit square, maybe. LBW shot, but uh, Empire not interested. Last ball here of the 11th over. Pace off again from Pitt, and it uh, concludes with a dot. That's Limbo Pimpalas. Uh, 82 for 2 off the 11 overs. Oh, it's been a, it's the game really in the balance so far. 82 for 2 of the 11. Nine overs to come. A run a ball at this stage. Put your coaching cap on. What do you think is an ideal score here for the Limpopo and Palas? And if you were in the Knights like out now, what are you looking to restrict them to? Yeah, I think Vian, it's again like stated earlier, it's, it's, it's difficult batting first to know exactly what is enough. I would feel getting a feel for a wicket and, and the pace of a game, I would say at least 165. As uh, Aubrey Swanepoel, he's Darts it into Masondu with a mid-wicket this time. And he squeezes a dot. This is a good ploy from the Knights to try and keep Masondu in strike. And Bull dots him. They've got a mid-wicket in play. One point as uh, Swanepoel bowls it fairly full again. And that's another dot. Precious bowling here at the Limpopo and Paula's batting, batting unit. Third ball of the 12th to Masondu. He drops and runs it straight to the fielder. That shouldn't have been a run. Knights, they require a bit better awareness there. Masondu, under a lot of pressure, he literally dropped the ball off the side of the wicket and ran. Only one run here, three balls. Yeah, I think Vian, you want to get to that 170 to bring your bowlers into the game against the experienced batting lineup of the Knights. It looks like a good wicket. Swanepoel now continues to Hasbrook, short arm jab, hard into the vacant mid-wicket region. A lot of work in Pat Guerta once again does brilliantly. Big and two balls this. Yeah, the score now 84, it's, a, it's been a good over so far. I did like the mid-wicket in place for Masondu. I don't see him as someone that will go on the reverse sweep. And Swanepoel continues now. He gives himself room. He eats it over extra four six. Big pressure release shot there from the Impalas. Masondo, he was experiencing the pressure there. He knew he needed to go. Only two runs from four balls and a great shot over extra cover for six. As uh, the momentum stays here with the Impalas pushing for that 170. Against the run of play, a beautiful cricket shot up and over the offside. Swanepoel now continues. And you wouldn't want to be missing that one. It's worked into the leg side. Work to be done. It's from Firen. 
It's good riding once again by the Limpopo Impalas. The score now 92 for 2 after 12. And uh, a huge moment in the game, that shot from Masonu. I think it was a, a case of going for it. If he goes out, it, he goes out. Good connection. It might be just the momentum shift or the breaking of the shackles Masonu needed. Yeah, I agree, Vian. It was a big moment. And uh, as we saw that previous delivery, that's going to be also the danger chasing a score here from the Willows end. That last delivery just stayed a touch low. Good running from the Impala to pick up two. But that's going to be your trick. And it's difficult to score against if a spinner bowls. You can only stay in your crease and the ball skits low. That's difficult to score. So the Impala, so they will keep on pushing as speed bowls his last over from the Lock Logan end. He bowls it fairly straight to Rasbrook. He drops it, that's brilliantly played. Dropped it again for the boundary fielders to run in a long distance and he takes two to the vacant midwicket area. Now yeah, Osbrook's been around the block as well. Uh, played a lot of university cricket for the Northwest University. Played a couple of seasons at the Lions as well. Speed continues to Osbrook on the front foot defensive, drops it into the offside and good running once again by the Impalas. And uh, oh yeah, the Impalas really have been the surprise package so far this season in the CSA Division 2, across formats really. Uh, they have played some good cricket. They are a very competitive team, uh, Vian. It's very difficult to drive to Polokwane and go beat Limpopo in Polokwane. They've got a hard-nosed coach in uh, Gordon Parsons. Uh, he sets quite a high standards and it's good to see. That's uh, what what the Division 2 is all about. Oh, it's a scampered single, ta it's taken to short, fine. Jock Snayman, he was in a business there, but he missed the stumps. Yeah, they've got, they've got, uh, they've got a hard notes coach, Vian uh, Gordon Parsons, he sets high standards, and it's, it's good to see that, that players like Hasbrook, he gets exposure, and he, he improves at this level, as he hits a hard shot, uh, in a, Big vacant with the wicket area, Pete a bit short in that instance, and uh, Osbrook he dealt with that very well. Yeah, Osbrook hits that one like a rocket to the fence, and I do think that is a good ploy, try and hit midwicket as hard as possible, especially with the vacant midwicket region being there. And uh, anything in the gap is at the very least two runs as Osbrook hits that one straight towards deep midwicket for a single. You can see a disappointment on his. On his face, really, as he holds his hamstring. Yeah, maybe a tight hammy there. As uh, Pete bowls the loss over of his spell from the Lock Logan end. Short and wide. Oh, that's great fielding. That's great fielding from the Gale at uh, in the point uh, position. Definitely saved the boundary. And it's um, Limpopo and Paula say 101 for two after 13 overs. they well on their way here to 170. As Osbrook looks quite set, he's very dangerous. Um, and uh, it must be said, Vian, uh, impressive batting here from Osbrook. He has been around the block, he's an exciting player. Um, yeah, and I, I definitely feel a, a player like him with more opportunity will only keep on improving as he did show a lot of potential as a university player for the Northwest University bowling change here. Yeah? It does look like Osbrook's calling for some medical attention on his hamstring. It does look in a lot of discomfort there. If you just join us now, 101 for one after, or 101 for two rather after 13, and uh, Dane Pitt just concluding his four overs, naught for 29, and that is without taking any risk. As we alluded to earlier, that I think they decided and they identified maybe just sit on Dane Pitt, just knock, knock him around and try and get as much out of him as possible. And I think maybe a bit of frustration, Pitt trying to look for maybe a wicket or two, drag one or two short, and uh, Osbrook put them away nicely. Yeah, I think uh, the Popo will be very pleased uh, in the way they did play Pitt. Uh, on a big field like this, it, it is difficult to play, rather to score against spin, but they played him well, especially Ruan Osbrook. He left the ball in a vacant mid-wicket, uh, Spots he ran two and uh, what bad ball he did punish for four and uh, Yeah, the Impalas they quite uh, they set quite well here for for the remainder of this innings and he's still seven overs oh, 
Osprey does look in a bit of discomfort here. It's a nice little break now for the fielding side as well. As you see, Garnetar, the high tech knights, we could keep a batter doing a bit of stretches as well. And uh, I do look forward to seeing him and Jock Slamon coming out later on. That can be an exciting passage of play, those two against the new hard ball in the power play. They have been good so far, this competition especially. Yeah, a break and play, a welcome break and play here for the Knights as uh, the partnership quickly extended to 27 for the Popo and Paulus. I always feel when the batting team is going well, if you as a bowling team can, can slow up play, uh, just to gather your thoughts again, gather tactics, uh, dis disrupt the batter's rhythm. Uh, this time this time around it happened naturally with Ron Osbrook's uh, injury treatment, as he looks like he has a stiff Um It's always just, you know, it's good to, to slow down and, and get a clear mind again as, as, as the Knights made a Bowling change in this short break of play. It's Nipo and Bangusa. He's going to bowl from the Willows end. Bangusa, he's bowled uh, two overs, one wicket for 13. And I think uh, the ploy will be quite straightforward here. It will be into the wicket towards the leg side boundary. Uh, we've got a far leg out to deep square. A cow corner, a long on, no mid wicket in play. Third man is up, sweepers out on offside, mid off up. It's Osprey giving himself room to access the, the offside field. Missed on that opportunity. I think a bit of a double bluff there from Mpunguse. And uh, I think Osprey might take on the short stuff here. He's hitting with the wind now. There's a slight breeze coming from left to right on the screen. And with the tight hand, especially as Mpunguse comes in, Osprey pulls it out towards fine leg. Hit with immense power down towards the guy down there at fine leg. This brings Masondu back on strike. He's sitting nicely on 41, but a big task now for him to face up to the back of a length deliveries again from Mpuguse. Yeah, it was well balled from Mpuguse. Uh, he gave Ruan Osbrook no whiff there. As Ruan Osbrook, he prefers you know, room for his, his arms to swing. As uh, Masondu on strike here, full and straight. Oh dear, that's a no ball from um, Punguse, that's inexcusable at this level. And uh, the dangerous run Osprey can strike as well. As you said, we are easy thing with the slight breeze. Free it now for Osbrook. Does it did look like he was aiming for a second there, but I don't think he ever had an attention coming back for a second with the free hit on offer. And uh, it looks like Swanepoel waving the traffic around a bit, changing the field. Looks like there's a deep point going out, there's a deep extra cover, a long off coming out onto the fence, final leg and deep square leg coming up as well, so you have to imagine it's going wide of off stump, maybe place off as well. Yeah, this has been a uh, ploy from the Knights in a def against the, the SWD badges, um, Pongusi, he comes around the wicket, wide out sort of, that's brilliantly bold. Oh. Mistake there from Garnetar behind the stumps uh, for them ballers to get a bye, but you would feel that the Knights were lucky there. It was the ploy for the Knights against SWD towards the death as well to bowl wide outside off with an offside field out. Again, brilliantly executed from Bungusi there. That previous delivery on a free eat. He's back to a normal field for Masundu. Hard into the wicket. Peel there, uh, but the batter not interested uh, on the, as the umpires. Leg side field out here again for Masondu. Umpire signaling first bumper for the over as well. That is, of course, the first short one. And uh, 105 for 2 of the 13.4. Almost six and a half overs left. And uh, it can be dangerous territory this for the Knights. Important two balls you would feel for the momentum of the match as uh, Boguse, he balls into the leg side. Sondre, he plays it conservatively into the deep square boundary for one. 
it's a very important ball you would feel. Not a bad over so far for Mpunguse, even with the no ball free hit. He only conceded four from this over so far. Last ball of this 14 for over. Big play this. Last break on strike. Might feel this is a base off delivery. Hard into the wicket. Osprey beats it hard to deep mid wicket in Pat Buita for only one run. Good over in the end from um, Punguse. The 14th over concluded. SWD badges 107 for two. Yeah, so the Pope and Paul has 107 for two after 14. Six overs to come. And run a ball, they'll get something between 114 and 150. And I, at this stage, I do think they'll be aiming. For definitely at least over 150. I think they'll be eyeing something close to 170 at this stage if they can go all cylinders. And uh, I think anything above 150 might be competitive as well. I think Limpopo and Paulas, their strong suit so far has been their bowling. Uh, Daniel van der Merwe and Don Radebe in the top three wicket takers of the competition. And the experienced Aldred Hawken also in the mix. So I think it's going to be tough going if those bowlers can get it right. Yeah, I agree with you, and I think they're a disciplined bowling unit. They know where their strengths lie, um, and as you said, uh, with Aldred Hawken, he's got a world of experience. As a bowling change has been made, Tian Fafiren back into the attack from the Lock Logan end. Big over you'd feel this is Ron Hasbrook's on strike. Fafiren also bowling with a leg side dominant uh, field on the boundary as he crams Ron Hasbrook. This is a good ploy. Run Osbrook enjoys with as uh, Fafiran he cramps him around the wickets into the pads for one run. Yeah, off the pads there for a single. And uh, importantly for the Knights, that takes Run Osbrook off strike. Um, not that Masundu is less a batter, but Ron Osbrook definitely a very, very dangerous batter. Hits a long ball, hits the ball very hard. Masundu well set on 43 at this stage. Yeah, you do get the sense that Masondo will just play a helping hand here and giving Ruan Osbrook as much strike as possible. He gives himself a bit of room to access the offside, but well adjusted from, from Fafiran, he keeps on following in. Masondo eats it to long on for one. And that, importantly for the Limpopo and Paul, as that brings Ruan Osbrook back on strike. And. Uh, 2.2 overs, not for 15 for Tian van Vieren at this stage. I do like this ploy, left arm coming around, taking away all the swinging arm space for the swing. It's Hasbrook now on strike. It's well bowled. Again, off cutter. You saw it staying a bit low. And they pass through for a by unfavorable bounce there for Garnetar. Uh, he's had a, one or two mishaps behind the stumps in the last couple of overs. I think maybe the two-paced two nature of the wicket maybe coming in a bit, maybe the ball not coming through as expected. Yeah, it can be difficult to keep on a wicket like this where the ball just bounces in front of the keeper. As a Osbrook pace off delivery into the left hip of Masondu, down leg on this occasion. Good ploy here from the Knights. From Firan, he's bowling around the wickets to the right hander. Again, both sides is big boundaries. And this uh, right hand is on this occasion, they are hitting into the gentle breeze. From Firan, who's a left hander, he will take, try and take the ball away uh, with off cutters from the swinging arc, but also trying to cramp them. As, uh, into the left hip again, well bowled from Van Firan. You can feel now the momentum that it's creeping back towards the Knights side here, Vian. There's only two balls to go in this over. They've only scored four runs of this from Firan over. Uh, big two balls you would feel for the, for the momentum for the rest of the innings. Oh, definitely a good over so far from Van Firan. There was, of course, one wide delivery, but looking at the bigger picture in this over so far, he's bowled to a plan. And I think that's the biggest thing to look at from a coaching perspective is he's bowled to a plan. Cramped again, scampered single from Masundu. He inside edged the ball into his pad. They scampered through for one. Big ball this 
last ball from Van Vieren, over only conceding five runs, he's bowling to run Asbrook. I would feel that the correct ploy will be maybe yet to take the pace off to Asbrook. He enjoys pace on onto the bat. Asbrook maybe going to look to give himself a bit of room, look to hit it over extra cover region. It's Van Vieren now to Asbrook. Odd length for that. It's unlucky from Van Vieren. Fine leg is out. And uh, it looks like it beat them here at fine leg. That's four runs for Osbrook. That's unlucky. That was well bowled hard into the wickets. As the Limpopo and Palas, they continue their, their, their quest for a decent score here against the Knights. 116 for two with five overs to go. Ruan Osbrook, he's quite set on 21. Sees where he's on 45. As uh, it looks like Aubrey Swanepoel comes back into the attack. Uh, from the Willow's End. Now once again fortune favouring the Brave as Hasbrook tries to take on Van Vieren. Score 116 for two, five overs to come. And uh, Captain Aubrey Swanepoel taking it upon himself to pull this, his last over. He's gone for 21. He's taken one wicket, an important wicket of Lauren Steenkamp. He goes to Masondu. Masondu giving himself room again. Mistimed, uh, looking to hit the ball over extra for a boundary. The ball goes to sweeper. Swanepoel again, very defensive field. Mid-wicket is vacant with a uh, short, short third and a backward point. Field is hanging on the ring to give Harsbrook to one. Swanepoel to Harsbrook from the Willow's end. Harsbrook plays it quite conservatively towards short fine for one run. I think Swanepoel will look to get out of this over without too much damage. Try and maybe sneak a wicket, maybe sneak a low scoring over here in the context of the game. Being at the stumps and Masondu works that one out towards deep mid wicket. Really hits it actually too well. Pat Boerta once again keeping it down to one. Yeah, good point, Davian. I think Swanepoel will just try and get through this over with limited damage, try and halt the onslaught for as long as possible as Hasbrook hits that hard into the gap of uh, between Cow Corner and Longhorn for four runs. That was slightly short. Hasbrook was quick to bounce on it. And uh, Hasbrook, he's going well, trying to get the Impala to, uh, to a big score. Short again, Hasbrook missed time, fortunately this time for the Knights. Straight to Cow Corner, only for one run. Yeah, Hasbrook, you get the sense he likes to hit the ball hard. He wants to hit the ball hard. As uh, the partnership now reaches 50 runs, 40 balls. Swanepoel continues to Masonu, it's in at the bat. Worked into the leg side. Hasbrook's going back for a second. A shy at the keeper's end. And good running in there and by the Limpopo Impalas. And now yeah, that looked like that one kept slightly low as well once again. Mm, again, that's that's a trick batting on the Lock Logan end. If the bowler bowls from the Willows end, the odd ball will stay low. And as we just saw with that delivery, a missed time on this field with Adamant Wicket, that's always going to be two. The Impalas, say 126 for two after 16 overs, four overs to go. You would, wait, you would say that they want to try and push for that 170 score via and I've got a lot of wickets in hand here. Yeah? I think they're going to start launching now. No excuse not to. We've got two set batters, another bowling change from the Knights. It looks like they're going to go into their death ploys of bowling wide outside off with an offside field set as Sitimbile Langa. He comes into the attack from uh, the Lock Logan end. Yeah, 126 for two with four overs to come. 10 over from here gets him 166. So you'd imagine they'll be eyeing close to 170, maybe anything more. will be nice for them as well. As we just saw, Aubrey Swanepoel complete his fourth over, one for 31. And Lampogo and Paulus did negotiate the spin threat of the iTech Knight rather nicely. As Langa continues now to Haasbrook. What? Oh, that's a terrific shot from Haasbrook. It was wide outside off. Square leg is up in the ring. And he kind of sweep slapped that from 
a low full toss. That's a terrific shot uh, from Ruan Osbrook. Yeah, a bit of hockey in that one. Oh, yeah, as we see, Ruan Osbrook moving over into the offside channel, down on one knee. And he just whips it across for a massive hit, almost onto the embankment and against the wind as well. A very impressive shot there by Ruan Osbrook. Yeah, as we see the field set here, it's long off. It's a sweeper, it's a deep point and third man. As Hasbrook walks over again, he slaps it into the leg side towards the cow boundary, only for one on this occasion. Very obvious what the Knights is going to do here towards the death. You know, try and bowl inside that wide offside, uh, if, offside, excuse me, offside line. Um, as the batters, they will try and look to excess the square leg uh, area, short fine area as square legs up into the ring, fine legs up into the ring. Langa. Oh, and the umpire eventually decided that's a wide. It's a close call. I think that was the right decision in the end. Um, as uh, the song do use on strike. 49 runs, one run needed for his 50. Yeah, setting on 49, I wouldn't mind the bowlers having this ploy. Just get some bat on it into the offside and go over the line for a half century. As Langa now continues. Oh, that's a great shot by Masondu. Knowing uh, the bowlers is going to bowl wide outside of Langa, he erred into a whole volley, and that was just a strong cricket shot from Sizwe Masondu. And that brings up his half century. Well played by the young man. He did struggle early on with the short pitch deliveries. Uh, but after the initial spell of seam bowling, he held his own, played a supporting hand throughout the innings, 53 runs or 46 deliveries, and he keeps on going strongly here towards the death overs for the Limpopo and Palas. Langa now continues. Right outside off, Masondu walked over, that's a dot. Bit of an agricultural heave there. Well bowled by Langa. And you get the sense Masson to play as a sort of anchor role for the Limpopo Impala's innings with the guys around him going all cylinders firing. I think his role is to bat through the innings and give them that stability. Two balls to go in the 17th over Langa from the Lok Logan and he's bowling to see where Masson do. Full and straight on this occasion. It's like a scampered single and Pat Puerta, he uh, misses the stump on that occasion. It was a certain run out. Risky ball to bowl with this field as there's only one uh, leg side field on the boundary and that's a cow corner. Sees where Masondu will feel the kind of missed out there. Importantly for the Limpopo Impala that brings Ron Osbrook back on strike. You see a change in the field, deep square leg drops back and deep extra cover comes back into the ring for this last ball of the over. Weird field being set here. They've got a deep square out as well as a cow, but Meron is up into the ring. Can't imagine that this might be too full. He goes wide again. That is a terrific shot from Ruan Osbrook. He takes advantage of deep extra cover that was just taken or was just brought up back into the ring. And he chips it over. Deep extra cover for one bounce boundary. That's another great shot from Ruan Osbrook. He's showing good promise here against a strong bowling, a, a strong Knights bowling attack. Great shot there, Vian, from, uh, from Ruan. Yeah, Osbrook has, has looked a million bucks since coming out. That's a very impressive shot. Takes the score to 143 for two. Three overs to come. Let's look like the bowling stats. We have Van Fieren who has one left. Langa has two left. And Pongusa has one left. So you'd imagine between them, they're going for Jock's name on. I think it's a, a bit of a risk, but I think it's a good move for this stage, maybe. Getting your experienced campaigner, Jock's name on, of course, being a Protea capped player in the white ball format. It's a gamble, are you? Yeah, it's a massive risk here. The right hand bat is aiding with the wind. I can't assume that Jock's name on will, will toss it up here yeah, uh, to, to provide a batters with the opportunity to get underneath the ball. Interesting ploy here, the death ploy not going as planned for the Knights as uh, on both occasions uh, from Nippon Punguse and Sitembile Langa, they've 
conceded a hefty amount of runs in the last two overs. Snyman, he goes harder into the wicket. One run for Sizwe Masondu as he takes a scampered single into the offside. This is a big play here for Ron Osbrook. He's going to fancy himself here towards the leg side boundary. He enjoys the slog sweep. Jock Steinman, he bowls flat into the pitch. That's well bowled. Osbrook hits it to sweep for one run. It's well bowled from Jock Steinman. Not getting, giving the batter any time to get it underneath that ball. And you'd imagine the Lapopo and Paulas would like Masonda to get a move on here as well at the back end of the innings. Yeah, he goes for it. He eats a slog sweep miss time to the cow boundary, only for one run. Good start here for Jock Simon. He bowled three balls, only conceding three runs. Ruan Osbrook, he, he will fancy himself here. I think we're, it's, this is the time of the innings. It's, this is going up. It's going so somewhere now. Slight fielding change here. Sweeper goes to deep extra cover and they push extra cover around to point as Hasbrook hits it into the pocket again of long on and cow corner. That's brilliantly placed. Another great shot there from Ruan Hasbrook. I think Vian was really impressive there. Although it was bowled hard into the wicket, Ruan Hasbrook, he still makes a decision where to actually hit the ball. He picks his gap and he executes brilliantly. Oh, that previous boundary brings up the 150 for the Limpopo Impalas. And imagine if Ron Osbrook bats still there, and it's danger signs now for the Itech Knights. Two balls to go in this 18th over from the Willows end. Osbrook advances, he hits it hard to Dion Forrest at long on. Only one run. Osbrook, a really good strike of the cricket ball. And especially impressive at this, the biggest outfield in South African cricket. Sneeman continues to Masondu, hits it out towards deep square leg. A lot of work to be done by Van Vieren, yeah. who can't keep it down to one. As the Popham Palace batters come through for a second. Yeah, that's good over for the Popham Palace again, pushing their score up to 153 for two after 18. Two overs to go. This is two important overs. It's the, the Pope and Palace can keep on pushing here. The momentum will be with them going into their bowling innings. But as we saw against the SWD Badgers in the Knights' last home fixture here, yeah? uh, the Knights, they finished their uh, innings rather well off in that occasion, on that occasion. And that uh, momentum created by that, they just continue with that into their batting, batting innings. So this last two overs is still very important. Uh, for both teams, as Tian van Vieren, he comes back into the attack from the Lock Logan end. Good decision here by the Knights, as uh, van Vieren, uh, with his left arm around, he will try and cramp the right-handers, but also try and take pace off with his off-cutters that goes away from the swinging arc off the right-hand battle of Ruan Osbrook. He's on strike. He does a low full toss, he's uh, van Vieren. Osbrook with a missed time. Uh, into the massive uh, mid-wicket vacant area for two runs. Yeah, for Fieren, it looks like he has clear plans. And uh, I do think the ploy coming around the wicket, especially to Osberg, is a good one. I can't imagine Osberg backing down. He's going to take it on. Try and hit that mid-wicket region hard. Leg side field set here with a fine leg, deep square cow corner, long on out, sweepers out as well as uh, Van Vieren. He bowls a great cutter into the wicket, but that's a magnificent shot from Ruan Osbrook. Four runs and that brings up his half century. Well played young man, 50 runs of 29 balls. That was a terrific knock. It's a terrific knock so far from Ruan Osbrook, bringing the Limpopo and Paulas. Into this contest, right? pushing hard for a score of 170. Oh, Osbrook's been impressive since coming out there. He's really started in another gear than the rest of them. He's really took off in maybe third gear already. And uh, very, very dangerous batter to have in here at the death. For Fearin around the week gets its well played. I go on for a peel. Osbrook feels like he bumped ball and that's also the decision from the umpires. That's actually a really good cricket shot there by Osbrook, a metre to the right or to the left of that field and was four written all over it. Yeah, good 
point via an offside field is brought up. It's only a sweep on offside boundary. Mid off is up, third man is up. Everyone out on the leg side. It was a great shot. Unfortunately, on this instance, straight to the field as from Firin. He bowls a fourth over of the 19th over. Round the wicket, slow full toss, spliced uh, by Ruan Osbrook. Alanga misjudging the ball on the sweeper boundary. Osbrook, he comes through for two runs. Oh, Osbrook looking to access the offside, going against the angle. Of course, left arm around the ball coming down the leg side, going against the natural angle of the ball over the offside. Looks like he's seeing it like a beach ball out there, are you? Yeah, you would feel this is a massive delivery in the context of the game, yeah. Last delivery of the 19th. It's basically a free hit for Osbrook. Oh, that's well bowled by Tian Fafiren. Full at off stump. Osbrook did not manage to get underneath the ball. And excuse me, that was not the last ball of the over. That was actually the fifth ball of the over. Nonetheless, it's still an important ball here in the context of the match. Again, free here for Seizwe Masondu. He's got nothing to lose. Osbrook's on strike already at the other side for the next over. Feel this with my baby. A base off would maybe be a good option here from Van Vieren. He bowls it into the pads of Seizwe Masondu who takes one to deep square. Oh, that uh, single takes us into the last over of this first innings. The score now 163 for two. One over to come in this the first innings. And I, uh, which of the two sides do you think will be happy at this stage? You're going to wait it out for another over? Yeah, I do feel you're going to need to, I think in T20 cricket, uh, the last over of the first innings is so important because that normally directs uh, to which team the momentum goes. Uh, as I feel this is a very, very good score so far. Um, but if the Knights can manage to restrict uh, the Impalas here to 170, you would feel that a match is brilliantly poised and in, in the balance as the Impalas they have a good bowling attack, but the Knights, they've got, they've got, you know, they've got incredible batting depth. So very important very important last over of the innings here for both teams as uh, Nippon Pongusa, he will finish the innings out from the Willows end. He's bowling to Sizwe Masondu, who's on strike. Our oh, complete clean bolt, leg side uh, field set. Masondu, he was eyeing that leg side boundary and uh, completely missed that one. Four years, 59 or 53 balls. Now um, Mpongouse preventing Masondu from carrying his bat. And uh, at this stage, 163, you have to feel it's already a, a good and defendable total. 163, I think, with the bowling they have. It's something on the board, but they'd love to get over 170, maybe look to get 175 from here. And uh, I do think they'll be in a good position then. Yeah, I do feel for that psychological advantage you want to get over 170 runs uh, for the Knights to chase which can become quite tricky in the afternoon yeah, if you bowl well towards your fields and disciplined and as you said Vian it's something on the board you put the, you put the game in the hands of the Knights because now somebody is going to need to play a good knock and take responsibility for the Knights to, to, to win this game as, uh, as we see the new batter to the crease that's more than I think to number 120 on his back Five balls to go in this innings. I feel it's incredible. Five important deliveries here for both teams. If um, Pungusi he can restrict the Impalas uh, to underneath 170, you would feel the momentum is with the Knights going into their batting innings. I think important here for the ITEC Knights is they would love to keep the new batter Fenta on strike or more importantly keep Osbrook off strike as Mpunguse continues now punched into the offside and as I said a single is taken which brings the impressive and really he's played a beautiful hand here so far it brings Ron Osbrook back on strike yeah 
Good point, Vian. He's got four balls to work with here. He'll try, try and take maximum runs here with these four balls remaining from um, Bungose. As he's bowling from the Willow's end. Shuffles over to the offside. Looks like they're going back for a second. It's brilliant running by the Purple and Palas. Might be a bit high. Yeah, good, good awareness there from the non striker. Seeing the opportunity of two runs immediately uh, with, with, with a massive uh, mid wicket vacant area inside the ring. Ron Osbrook just walking over the, uh, walking over the stunts, uh, trying for Mpunguse to change his line, but he sticked with his line towards his uh, boundary fielders on the leg side. You ball, yeah, he eats it well. That's over deep squares head for, for, for six runs. Pumbuse hitting a hard length there. Half a hit of Ruan Hasbrook's uh, bat with the wind and it sailed over the boundary fielder of uh, deep square who was not completely on the boundary edge. And uh, the ball beating him over He's head for six runs. Yeah, you'd imagine if he, if he was maybe on the on the fence. I don't think it would have made such a big difference at, into the advertising boards, but at this stage of the innings, you'd, you'd like your feelers to be on the fence. As uh, Osprey especially is not looking to take singles now. Two balls to come in the innings. Osprey on strike. Gives himself room. Oh, he smacks that through the offside. He uh, totally there in line. Uh, Nipum Panguse, he literally fielded it. Uh, he's uh, Ruan Osbrook's pl play there of giving himself room to access the offside. That's exactly what Ruan Osbrook did. He smashed that, the, the ball beat it. Sweeper, sweeper probably had two or three seconds to move, but the ball still beat it in for four runs. Sure, Osbrook's played an incredible innings here so far. I imagine he had come in earlier for the Impalas. Last ball of the innings here. Yeah. Osbrook on strike. Nippon Punguse. Oh, it's going to be a dot. That's well bowled. It's well bowled. You wanted to see maybe a bit more of that into the wicket space, into the wicket pace off. But that concludes the innings for the Limpopo and Palas. Impressive score here on the board. 176 runs for free after 20 overs. Impressive knock from Ruan Osbrook. He scored 63 not out from 36 balls. Great knock by the young man to post a very competitive score, score you would feel here of uh, Vian for the Limpopo and Palas to try and defend. Yeah, 176 or three in there, lot of 20 overs. Ruan Osbrook to start the show. 70 of 63, but he part a not out of 36 balls. And uh, I do think the Impalas will be the happy of the two sides. The Itek Knights, of course, if you just joined us, they won the toss and elected to bowl first. Uh, so the game in the balance, we have a crack on our hands here. So from myself, Vian Dupassi and Aya van Vake in the commentary box, we'll be right back.
Welcome back here to Mangung Oval. Uh, so we return from the innings break. It's the iTech Knights. They are chasing 177 to win in this uh, CSA T20 challenge uh, contest between the iTech Knights and uh, Le Popo and Palas. Le Popo and Palas, they posted a good uh, 177 uh, in their first innings with uh, Ruan Osbrook, uh, top scoring of 63 not out. Brilliant knock by the young man, and um, yeah, the, the the players basically yeah, in the Knights' hands. They're going to need to bat well, and they're going to need to have a batter who takes responsibility to win the game here for them. As uh, the Limpopo and Paulas Vian, they will be very pleased with the total they posted. Yeah, welcome back to all our viewers. Uh, if you're just joining us now, earlier on the Knights won the toss. They elected to bowl first, and uh, the Limpopo and Paulas were up to the task. Uh, he scored 176, Ruan Osbrook being the star of the show. And uh, 177 the target to win for the Itech Knights against a very, very impressive Limpopo Impala's bowling attack so far this season. The likes of Albert Hawken has been impressive and he has had two very good partners in the form of Radebe and Van Amarve. I'm Vian Duplessis with me in the commentary box still for the second innings of the encounters, Aya van Wijk. Aya, in which of the two teams' camp would you rather be at this stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a difficult one. To be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, as a coach, I wouldn't like chasing the score. Um, as, it, as it seems like in Purple, they're gonna, they're gonna open uh, their bowling account with Offspin and Ruan Osbrook bowling around the wickets uh, to, to, to to, to Jock's name on the two opening batters for the night say that's uh, Jock's name on Gian Kluter. Yeah, Vian, I wouldn't like chasing this score. This is a this is a very competitive score. I think the after losing the toss, the Limpopo and Palas, uh, I won't say they're in the driver's seat, but I, I do tend to feel that I was maybe slightly more confident or comfortable is the word um, with this score on the board. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be Ruan Osbrook to, to uh, open proceedings for the Limpopo and Palas. He's going to bowl to a very experienced pair of chalk, Sneeman and Kluter. Sneeman works that one down towards Long On to open his account. Yeah, the trick for the Limpopo and Palas here will be to get through the power play. That's the best time to score for the Knights. Ball is hard and new. Field is up. There's only two fielders outside the ring allowed in the mandatory power play. And it's, uh, for Gian Klute, it looks like a deep but wicked and a long off. Gian Klute, he likes hitting the ball through the offside. He's also an experienced campaigner. As uh, Ruan Osbrook, he will try and, uh, try and cram Gian. Yeah, he's bowling with Adam at wicket. And a deep at wicket in play and a long off. The two fielders outside the 30 yard circle. Osbrook comes around the wicket, Klute on the reverse and uh, some ill-disciplined fielding by the Impalas sees Klute get off the mark. And not the ideal start there for the Impalas, are you? Yeah, that's a soft left let off. I mean, uh, Ruan Osbrook, he will, he will fancy himself against the left hand and, uh, and a slight misfield like that, very unnecessary. Time to, to squeeze a couple of dots to take wickets in a power play as Osbrook, oh, that was hit hard to mid off. Osbrook uh, around the wickets, he's trying to cramp Sneeman. Uh, Sneeman met that ball, no run. Oh, that's picked up. Jock Sneeman, that it didn't even look like a lot of effort. He just picked that up like a short and short and jab against a seamer, and uh, he deposited that into the onto the bank. Good start here from Jock Sneeman. That's exactly what the Knights would like. Uh, would like to see. Osbrook oh, around the wickets. It's excellent work of his own bowling there by Osbrook. And uh, in the interval, we had a chat about him as well. It's really it's a good package as a cricketer, is Ron Osbrook. Excellent fielder as well, and as you saw earlier, very, very handy with the bat. He looks to finish out his over. 
know, it's the end of the first over the night is nine. Without loss, uh, Arsbrook, he's just going to look to dart it in quick. Uh, but with added pace, your line needs to be perfect as well as your length. And that one ball he dropped short in the over, Jock Simon bounced on it, deposited him onto the, bow, uh, onto the bank as the Knights, uh, they own their quest to chase down 177 as uh, we have Aldrich Hall. Mordenai Fenter, excuse me, uh, opening the bowling from the Willow's End for the Rampopo and Palas. A uh, decent start here by the Itek Knights, 9 for no loss after 1. And I have the uh, power play very, very important, especially in this run chase. You'd imagine they'd look to take on the power play here. You did see it was a bit more difficult to score after the power play. Yeah, so we see a slip in play here for Mordai Fenter. He's got a third man. He's also got a deep, let's say a deep and wicked in play. Massive uh, open space on the leg side. Mordai Fenter, he jogs up. Well, slightly floatish outside off and Jack Snyman, he just slapped that over Middleton's head for four runs. Yeah, Snyman of course a very very destructive batter especially in the power play. Him alongside Gian Kluter, both of them having played for the protest before. Very very experienced batting lineup that the ITEC Knights have. It's not going to be an easy task to restrict these two batters in the power play especially for the Limpopo and Palace. Yeah, after one ball slips his, slip has been taken out, he goes him and pick it. So when I think uh, he's in balls to jog slam on full and straight, that's four more. Yeah, it's interesting ploy here from the Limpopo and Palace opening with more than I think instead of uh, the pace of Albert Hawken. Anything float is to Jock Snyman is uh, is massive danger. As uh, Ruan Osbrook, he's going to bring out, up his third man now as well. Push out long on to limit the damage of this over. Jock Snyman off to a great start. Uh, Jock Snyman, a very powerful striker of the cricket ball, and Morgan Fent found an immense press early on in this in this innings. Yeah, lack of pace. Doing Jock Simon there, outside off, he missed out there. Offside field is up in the ring. Middolf is up, third man is up. Uh, Longhorn is out, and a deep and wicket is out. Jock Simon, he, he will feel like he missed out there. Yeah, well, yeah coming back to a point that is very interesting the Limpopo and Paul is not going with the strike bowler, Aldred Hawken here up front with the new ball. Fenter now continues to Snowman. Good length delivery, Simon punches it back for no run. Yeah, I always get the feel that if you just look as a bowling unit just to get through the power play, that's where you actually go for the most amount of runs because of the defensive mindset as well as just the energy behind the ball. You should be looking to try and take wickets. If you take wickets in your power play, especially up to three wickets, the chances of you limiting the scoring of runs in the middle overs is, is way way better than just looking to get through the power play. Uh, I think he pitches up again, Snyman again. It's one of the offside fielders. I do think a customer like Fenter is, would be more difficult to get away, especially on this field with the wicket we have. I think he, he'll be a difficult customer to, to get away, especially I think if you can get someone like the wicketkeeper, my son, to come up to the stumps. I think he'll be very difficult to negotiate here yeah? in the middle period, especially. Yeah, I think up front in a power play, it's, it's going to be a difficult task for him. It's been to, he pitches it up, Jock Simon, he just punches it nonchalantly to long on, and they run to the Paulus won't be happy with that. It was straight to long on. As uh, the Knights, they are 19 without loss after two overs. I think Fenton did well after those first two deliveries. Uh, still going for 10 runs in his first over. And it does look like we have a change of bowling at the Loch Logan. It looks like it might be Jesse James Albany to bowl. 
my eyesight may be misleading me at this stage. But uh, a decent start here for the ITEC Knights. I think the Limpogo Impalas were at a similar score at this stage. As it is Albany that is going to bowl from the Loch Logan end. He's going to be bowling to Kluter who hasn't had a lot of a strike so far. Alright, so you see James Albany, he's bowling with a deep square out and a third man out. He's going to try and hit the splice off the bat of Gian Kluter. Ooh, that's very wide to start off with. Now Albany giving Masondo a good workout there behind the stumps. The umpire doing a bit of stretches as well. Again. I was talking not into the attack yet. Just get the feel that the uh, ball, I say, maybe just want to get the power play over with. I would like them to see to try and take wickets. If they can take wickets up front, they're going to make that chase in the middle all, all more hard and difficult. That's another wide from Albany. They're going to make that chase all the more difficult for the Knights in the middle overs. But if the Knights is going to go into this middle overs, with wickets in hand, it's going to be difficult for the Impalas to restrict them. Yeah, look, if the, if the Impalas allow these two batters to get away with a flyer here, um, it could be a danger signs for them. They have a good score on the board, but they, they need a few wickets up front yeah, as Albany now continues to clutter. It's a very nervy start here from Albany. That's three wides in a row. It's very unacceptable at this level. Like the same mistake three times in a row. I must say, Albany does look nervous. Running in, he looks tentative. Yeah, Albany definitely under pressure now. Changing his angle, coming around the wickets. Gramps got today. It's actually the first legal ball of the delivery, oh, of the over, excuse me. That's a good ball by Albany. I think if you can replicate that, it will be in business. Yeah, I think especially in the power play, you, you have to look to hit the splice of the bat, try and get your mid on, mid off fielders in place. It's difficult to be a bowler in the power play, especially if the wicket's as good as it is here and the outfield as well is a belter. Kluter missing out there, wide outside off, that's where Kluter prefers it, he's a strong offside player. Good ploy, maybe around the wickets, I think he should have done it from the first ball, try and cram Kluter. As uh, Kluter facing two dots in a row there. It does look like Albany is a lot more comfortable around the wicket. I do think he should be probably a lot more comfortable bowling to Kluter as well. Snayman looks in devastating form so far. Rams Kluter there, Kluter gets a top edge and it flew all the way for six. It went way over the boundary. Yeah, Albany on the, under a great deal of pressure here. Uh, it's been a, been a bit loose so far this over. Um, it looks like he's bowling with some decent pace. But uh, bowling a bit on both sides of the wicket. Bit inconsistent at this stage, but uh, the Itec Knights innings well and truly underway. The score now 28 for no loss, halfway through the third, and uh, Jesse James Albany under immense pressure as we see third man come up into the ring and finally like, dropping back onto the fence. So clear ploy now to go straight. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try and cram Gian Kluter, which is the right ploy. Can he execute that? He does. He bowls fairly straight to the stumps. Four, ball, four balls bowled in his third over. Albany already, uh, already gone for gone for nine runs in his third over. In this third over of the innings, it's uh, Albany. Two balls to go in this third over. Gian Clitton strike. Outside off, Kluter again missing out. Offside field is up. Kluter just struggle for some rhythm here. Yeah? Struggling for some rhythm here. Yeah? 28 for no loss. One more to come in third. 
and Joel Snyman has been good. Kluter, on the other hand, has looked like he's been struggling just a little bit, missing out on one, one or two occasions outside the off stump. Albany, on the main pressure, wants to finish out this over. He continues to Kluter. Outside off, that's another wide from Albany. That's a four foot over. But he doesn't look comfortable. That's a bit inexcusable at this level, really. Uh, four wides within the power play, especially with a professional cricketer. Albany under immense pressure. Oh, that's, that's where Gian Kluter prefers it. He punches it over middle. It looks like there's been. Good work done by Ruan Hosbrook as uh, Kluter comes uh, through for a third run. And that Albany over going for 13 runs. The Knights well on their way, 32 without loss after three. Yeah, that's a good start here by the Itech Knights. The Limpopo and Palas dearly li would like a wicket or two here in the power play. Of course, Daniel van der Merwe and Don Radebe Number two and three on the wicket-taking list in the Division Two competition. Along with them, of course, Albert Hawken. It looks like Hawken is going to be bowling now from the Willows End. Hawken, of course, having played a lot of cricket uh, for the Titans. Very, very experienced campaigner. Yeah, Albert Hawken, he bowls express space. He's going to try and uh, look to... Uh, to rush Gian Kluter here. Yeah. He doesn't want to give him whiff though. Uh, Kluter is uh, strong suit. He's uh, through the offside as, uh, as he will be bowling from the Willows end. He's bowling the fourth ball, fifth over of the innings. It's Kluter from a short run. Steams in. Follows his pads. Short fine. He puts in a good dive to get a hand on it. Important dive there. And it looks like he uh, short fine leg fielder there. Went down, potential injury risk there. I feel that short final leg might have winded himself. As the Itech Knights batters come through for two leg buys. And I, from an Itech Knights perspective, definitely Albert Hawken is, is, is one of the chief threats from a bowling perspective. Yeah, definitely, Vian, but I always feel on, uh, on the surface that. That's a good ball from Albert Hawken, especially to Gian Kluter, just cramping for room. I always feel that Mango Oval, that pace on the ball, that's also an opportunity for run scoring. So it is a double knifed uh, sword. The Knights would feel that they can score on anything loose, Albert Hawken will give them. But uh, Albert Hawken, as we know, he bowls express pace. If he can ke keep it fairly tight, he's going to be a handful on this wicket as. Uh, Kluter walks over. I must say that short final leg fielder doesn't look comfortable. He bowled an off cutter, well adapted from Hawken. He took the pace off. Kluter has no pace there to paddle the ball around the corner and they only get one run. Yeah, the one run bringing Jock Snayman back on strike. He uh, hasn't been on strike for a while now, Snayman. He he's the type of player who likes to be on strike. He likes to feel bad on ball. Definite threat for the Impala bowling lineup is Jock Snyman. Yeah, so we see a deep square out and a third man out for Snyman. Hawken from the Willows end. He bowls a good length delivery. Well negotiated by Snyman as he runs it down to third man for one. Good length delivery there from Aldrich Hawken. That's a type of delivery you won't be bowling in a power play. And definite experience showing here by Hawken. Four balls into his first over. He's only gone for two runs. Definitely the momentum shift that the Limpopo and Palas would have wanted from him. Yeah, good start from Morgan. Uh, quite surprised that he was only brought into an attack the fourth over of the power play. As we see Deep Square coming up. Uh, and uh, Hawken, he's bowling with a fine leg and a third man from the Willows into Gian Kluter. He pitches it up. Kluter takes a wake through Matwicket. It beats him at Wicket Fielder. Ruan Osbrook, he's putting chase to it. Stops it just in front of the long on boundary, and the Knights say settled for two runs. 
Yeah, Hawkins has been good so far. He's been accurate, he's been composed. Score now 38 for no loss after 3.5. One more to come in this the fourth over. The Knights dearly would like to maximize this power play. Good over so far from Hawkins. You would feel this is a very important ball to finish out the over. As uh, Klute goes hard again, he is struggling for his timing. Uh, no run inside the edge straight to mid-wicket. And that's the fourth over completed for the Knights. They are 38 without loss. Uh, 38 for no loss after four. Two more overs to come in the power play. And I have to feel at this stage of the match, these two Overs to come might be the most important two overs, or two of the most important overs in this contest. It's really going to determine the pathway on which this game will go forward. These two overs, it's going to be critical to determine the outcome of this game. As we see a bowling chain from the Lock Logan in, it's uh, Don Rodebe coming into the attack. I definitely agree with you, Vian. Two very important overs uh, in the contest context of this match as uh, two good overs for the Knights here now well in front of the game without any wickets that has gone down Don Rodebe he's bowling from the Lock Logan in good hard length that's the type of delivery you want to be bowling to Jock Simon cramping him for room as uh, the Knights say scampered it uh, through for a bye yeah, Rodebe has, has really had a good couple of seasons with the Limpopo Impalas and uh, once again, this year in the T20 competition, he's right up there with the wicket takers. Most importantly for the Limpopo and Paulus, Jacques Neyman being off strike now. Kluten not really finding his form or his rhythm so far in this innings. He's been struggling a little bit. He's currently on 13. Deep square leg and third man of two fielders outside the ring. Baby, it's a hard length. As Klute hits it, uh, good fielding there from Ron Osbrook. Uh, as uh, Klute hits it to middle for one run. And, uh, the field changing over once again. The effect of a left hand right hand combination being evident as deep square leg and long on order to field this outside the 30 yard circle now. So you'd imagine, Aya, that Rodeba will be going at the stumps. Yeah, it looks like he angles the ball in generally as a stock ball, which is good to jog. Steinman, oh, that's a terrific shot. He punches it past mid wicket, deep square, he makes good ground uh, to keep it down to two runs. Yeah, it looks like Don Rodebe, he's going to try and hit the stumps constantly, try and squeeze Jock Steinman for room. Uh, it's a good ploy, it's a good ploy against Jock Steinman in a power play. Yeah, I think it's, sometimes it's, it's, it's better to keep it as simple as possible, especially in the power play, try and get him to hit it down towards long on as Radebe comes in from the Loch Logan end. Oh, that is punished. Oh, that's great fielding again on the, on the long on boundary. Ron Hasbrook, he needed to make a lot of run uh, ground towards his left, facing the batter. As Jock Simon hit a very good shot past the bowler. And uh, another two runs there for Jock Simon. Simon hitting a real umpire killer there. At the shins of... Uh, Thomas Mokorossi, the umpire at the Loch Logan end. Yes, Rodebe from the Loch Logan end. He's bowling straight again. Snyman, he punches it into the leg side for one run. It's been a decent over so far by Rodebe. Five balls bowled so far. Seven runs conceded and this ball coming now. Oh yeah, might be a very, very big and important ball. Yeah, you just feel the the pressure build up towards Kluter. He's struggling to find the middle of his bat. And uh, also, as it's the fifth over of the power play, last ball here from John. And he bowled him spot on. Vian Duplessis he just mentioned it's a very important ball. Top of off. Well bowled. Kluter, he's struggling to find the middle of the bat. Middle was up. Kluter looked like he wanted to heave it over mid-wicket. And Don Radebe, you miss I hit, gets the wicket of Gian Kluter. He departs for 14 runs of 14 balls. 
and uh, Le Papa and Paula say back into the game with a, with a breakthrough. Now the score now 45 for one after five and uh, the wicket of the struggling Kluter brings to the crease a very very informed right hand batter in the form of Garnetar and uh, Aya he was in devastating form the other day against uh, I think it was against the Border. against Border Eastern yeah. Cape Inyati. I think he scored 70 or that in that game yeah yeah it's good to see Garnetar he's a local boy uh, it's good to see some local boys coming through the system here in Bluefontein. Garnetar, he's, uh, he's in good form, he's a good white ball player. And uh, he's coming into the crease, the, the Knights, they are requiring 177 runs to win uh, against Limpopo and Palas in the CSA T20 Challenge. And uh, we've got one over to go here in their power play. 45 runs for a loss of the wicket of Gian Kluter. Uh, Jock Steinman, he's still at the crease, he's going well on 24, not out. Uh, it's a big task here for Garnetar to, uh, to see his home team through and over the line. Yeah, now the last over of the power play. And uh, dearly trusted to the experienced Albert Hawken, he's going to be bowling to Jock Steinman. And uh, the match really on a knife's edge here, are you? Yeah, okay. massive over, massive over in the context of the game. This can de depend where uh, the early over, or early overs of the of the middle overs can go towards, as it starts off with a dot, full and straight from Hawken. Look like an off pace delivery, straight to mid wicket from Simon. Yeah, great confidence shown here by Hawken, still keeping his mid on up in the ring, sticking with his third man and deep square leg. The two fielders outside. And really no off measures here from Snowman. Walking from the Willows end, wide outside off, another dot. Snowman hitting offside, uh, fielders inside the ring. Just a little bit of pressure now building on Snowman. A lot of dot balls coming from the other end while he was going good in the first few overs. Maybe the wicket losing a bit of pace as well. Hawken from the Willow's end. He bowls to Simon. Simon flicks it to the deep square boundary, bouncing just short of the deep square fielder for one run. Uh, Garner Todd to face his first delivery. As, uh, as Vian uh, mentioned before, and uh, Gontar scoring a 74-34 delivery, uh, deliveries uh, on Tuesday against Eastern Cape and Yacht in East London. That was a terrific knock, uh, guiding the Knights to a total score there of 232. The Knights is going to need uh, Garnet to play another helpful knock here to see the team over the line. As uh, we have one run of three deliveries so far here in the final over of the power plays, we see a sl slip come into play. No mid wicket for Garnetal. Dot outside off. Ball staying a bit low. That's uh, normally what happens here at Mangung over late in the afternoon. Ball tends to skittle through towards the Lok Logan end. Some experience showing here from Orkin. One point flow is not for five at this stage. And he has really been the difference so far in this innings. Two vital deliveries to come in the first, or well, the power play here in the second innings. A little bit of extra zip there by Hawken. Looks like he angled that one in towards Garnetar. And look, I think Knights at this stage, they need someone to emulate what Ron Asper did in the first innings. Or a combination of two or three guys to put together something of the stature of what Ron Asper accumulated in the first innings. So... Um, Ideally, they'd like one of these two batters that are in there now to take advantage of the of circumstances and conditions and, and score big for their side. Pace off delivery. Uh, very good delivery there from Hawken to conclude the power play for the Knights. They are 46 for one. Good, lo uh, two, uh, good last two overs for the Limpopo and Palas. Brilliant experience there from... Uh, Aldred Hawken, uh, just taking the pace off for the last delivery 
knowing that the batter would like to score and uh, making it more difficult just by taking the pace off of that last ball of the over. As, uh, yeah, I agree, Vian. Uh, look, the bottom line is the Knights, they're going to need to have a batter who bats well. And that's exactly what Ruan Osberg did. He took responsibility for his team, seeing his team to 176 runs. And the Knights is going to need that. And uh, they would prefer having uh, Simon still at the crease for the majority of the innings, as well as Tar. Um, the Knights won't start to panic as yet as they have a lot of depth and experience in their batting, in, batting lineup. They do bat uh, to, uh, quite deep as well as uh, the Debe, he bowls uh, from uh, the Lock Logan end, I must say. Uh, what I've seen so far from the Debe, I do like. He's bowling nice and tight lines, he's hitting a good length, and that can be difficult uh, to handle on a big field like Wangung Oval in a chase. Yeah, Radebe has been good. I think uh, the most important thing is he has kept it simple. Uh, he has clear plans, he has a clear area and his natural area, line and length, is to bowl where he does bowl. And uh, of course now, first power play being done, five fielders allowed outside the circle. I'll run you through those off of this ball. Tar flashes that one over the offside, down towards third man. Yeah. On the bounce to Aldrich Hawken and Aya, the, the field they have now. Yeah, it, yeah. Tar trying immediately to track and take advantage of the middle fielder that's up into the ring. He came down, advanced down the wicket and spliced it over to third man as, uh, just as I said, that Don Rodebe, he brings up his fine leg and he pushes long off out. So I've got a third man, a long off, a sweeper, a deep mid wicket and a long on, on the boundary. I must say, he's quite strange for Rodebe who's angling the ball in to have he bowls another tight, tight line delivery to Simon for a dot. But Debe, he does angle the ball generally into the right-hander. And he only has, uh, only basically has a uh, deep square who's in, front of the, who's in front of square on the boundary with all his offside fielders out. Interesting to see what Jock Simon tries here. As uh, Rodebe again, full and straight, he pushes it, uh, well, he dugs it out. Uh, for one run. Good over so far here yeah, from Don Rodebe. Oh, the score now 49 for one off the 6.4. And two huge deliveries here coming now by Rodebe. He's going to Ghana Tar. Tar, of course, looking to take the game forward. That's going to bring Rodebe into the game as well. I wonder if Tar won't be looking for uh, the lap here as an option of sh short fine into the ring. Actually uh, steps away. That's a good delivery from Rodebe as he takes all the pace off the delivery. Good awareness, uh, good awareness there by Rodebe. A few oohs and ahs out there. Maybe a bit of bat on that one, but uh, not quite carrying to the wicketkeeper. It looks like Masondu is who has the gloves on, and uh, it's been a good passage of play here by the Limpopo Impalas. Oh, Rodebe bowling, Garneta clean as the Knights lose another important wicket. Very impressive, impressive bowling from Don Rodebe. Nice and simple, hitting a good length straight at the stumps. And uh, Garneta, he loses his wicket. He plays all around that delivery. He departs for one run. Uh, as uh, Limpopo and Palas, they take another wicket and they would start fancying themselves now. After a good spell of three overs here for Impalas. Yeah, Radebe is, is in the middle of a beautiful spell here for the Mpopo Impalas. And uh, those two wickets taking him to the top of the wicket taking tally. All the wicket takers list here in the Division 2 T20 competition. And uh, he's been impressive so far. Two overs, two for ten. And a uh, new batter now to the crease, Dion Forrester. And uh, he's been a revelation since coming to the Knights, are you? Yeah, he's a good versatile player. Uh, I'll never forget literally his debut for the Knights where he scored 100 and took five wickets at the recreational ground in Oatswood and against uh, SWD in winning that match. He's a very handy player and also during the week was announced that he's picked up into the National Academy. And uh, yeah, uh, 
for us, uh, he's, you don't get a lot of players these days who, who can bat in a top order and who can bowl with the new ball. So uh, it's good to see from uh, the 23-year-old coming to Bluefontein, trying to extend his career, uh, moving from Pretoria, the Afi All Boy, and played for Tux University. Uh, he's going to need to play a great knock here for the Knights as, uh, as the Knights literally now needing 10 runs and over for the remainder of the innings uh, to chase down the 177, uh, 176, sorry, excuse me, posted by uh, the Limpopo and Palas as we see a bowling change from the Willows end. It's run Hasbrook back into the attack. Around the wickets to uh, Jock Simon. He's got a mid wicket in place. Oh, Simon, uh, very surprisingly, goes on the reverse sweep. Good option, though, uh, the, as there's only one fielder behind square on the offside with the mid wicket in place. Now, oh, that uh, single move playing into the hands of Limpopo and Palas, of course, uh, bringing on a uh, right arm off break of Ron Osbrook. And the uh, new batter, the left hand batter now on strike, it's Dian Forrester. Mid wicket, no mid wicket in play. Short third man, point, extra cover, rather tight in there. Full at the stumps, a bit of turn. And almost had Forrester in a huge amount of trouble there, are you? Yeah, perfect first ball to a new batter, challenging the stumps. Well bowled again, that's a trick of bowling at the Log Logan end. One can zip through and stay low, one ball can turn, it's always difficult. Osbrook at this stage challenging both edges and that's what you want, are you? Yeah, well bowled from Osbrook as uh, Forrester, he gets off the mark by punching it too long off. Yeah, I think without uh, mid-wicket, uh, uh, you know, you're trying to set up the batter to play to play with a slightly angled bat and maybe missing that straight ball on the stumps. Good ploy here from, uh, from Osbrook. He's uh, encouraging Jacques Snyman to play the reverse. As uh, Snyman, he picks it up comfortably and uh, deposits it on to the Western Bank for six runs. Uh, that was dropped slightly short, Vian. And Jacques Simon, he's not going to miss out on that opportunity. Yeah, Jacques Simon, one of the more powerful strikers around in cricket South Africa. Definitely one of the purest strikers. So Osbrook looks to finish out the over. Once again on the reverse is Jacques Simon. A bit uncharacteristically going on the reverse. But a good option nonetheless as we see at the end of the eighth. The score now 57 for two after eight. And... Uh, Snam has really been fighting alone so far before the night, are you? Yeah, and uh, I must say, very impressed with Ron Osbrook's awareness there. He knows that Jacques Snaman, he's not the strongest sweeper of the ball. So it's encouraging that by putting his mid-wicket in place. And uh, for Snaman to go for an option which is not actually his strength. Osbrook will be disappointed with that one ball he dropped short in that over. Uh, but. Uh, not a, not a bad over at all for, for the Impalas. As the Knights, they require 10 runs and over. As we see a bowling change from uh, the Lok Logan end, it's Hardise Molefe into the attack as uh, he's a left arm orthodox. So that means it's uh, even more pace off now for the Knights to negotiate with. Molefe now is going to go left arm over the wickets to uh, the left hand batter, Jan Forrester. Molefe has good, had a good run as well in the T20 competition. Start to the wide down leg. Not the ideal start as well now for Molefe. In at the pads once again and whipped off his leg by Forrester. It's good feeling in the deep. Keeps it down to one and this brings a very interesting matchup. Is the left arm spin of Molefe to the right hand batter, Jacques Neyman. He'll look to take him on here, are you? Yeah, it looks like Molefe, he's going to try and bowl flat at the stumps. What about play on a big field? 
need to stay disciplined with the line though. If you uh, if you're gonna give Jock Simon any room here, he's gonna try and take it advantage. You do feel that something's gonna need to start happening here for the Knights in terms of boundaries. As uh, Molefe he strays down leg. Keeper did look oh no, the boy uh Jock Simon's pad so they get through for a leg by. 60 for 2 after 8. The high tech knight needing to go 10 and over from here. It's not going to be an easy task. Malefe now continues over the wicket. Malefe, he angles it into the stumps. Forrester negotiates it by tapping it into the vacant mid wicket area for one run. And Malefe now halfway through his first. He's gone for three runs so far. Doing well to keep keep the scoring rate down so far. Snaiman punches it down the ground towards long off. It looks like good fielding, but excellent running by the Knights. Coming back for a second. Yeah, good awareness there from Forrester. Ball was uh, it just wide off off long off, and uh, they come back for two runs. Two vital deliveries here for Malefi. Only only went for five now and four deliveries. So he bowls to Snyman, fairly straight again, well played for one run. Be interesting to see what Forrester does with this last delivery now of Malefe, who's overall only went for six runs so far. One delivery, uh, one delivery remaining. Forrester yeah, yet to get into his innings yet. He's on three so far. On the money once again by Malefe. It's worked into the onside. Work to be done. The Itek Knights batters come back comfortably for a second. Yeah, well played by Forrest today. Using the acres of space uh, on this massive playing surface at Mangung Oval to get his two runs. I think that's the way Forrest is going to set up his innings. He's going to play himself in, try and push the twos and then launch towards the end. As it can be difficult to score from the get-go at Mangung Oval, especially when they space off. As Osbrook, he's going to continue from the Willows end into his third over. His first two overs that go for 15. He bowled his first over, the first over inning, uh, first over of the of the innings uh, that went for 10 runs. Jock Snowman, he's on 36, not out. He's on strike. Uh, 10, 10 for over, the Knights need 10 point run, run, uh, 10, 10 point one runs to the over to chase down this uh, 176 and ball I suppose that Snyman uh, hitting the ball there too long off, a bit of sloppy fielding by Mordai Fent uh, guarantees two runs for Jacques Snyman. That's Neymar now, 38. Osbrook with a little bit of pause in the action. Hits it out towards deep square leg. Oh dear, that is... He puts it down at deep square leg. An awful bit of fielding sees him come through for another run. That could prove to be extremely costly for them. Paulas, Jock Simon, bullet at that ball. Straight to deep square, down his throat. And it looks like Don Radebe there on the boundary, put it a catch down. A weak throw also ensured Jock Simon to be coming through for two runs. This is great bowling by Ruan Osbrook. He's bowling to his field, he's bowling to his plan, with slight variations in between. Balls to Jock Simon, he hits it powerfully into the mid wicket. Uh, area as Forrester he comes back easily for two just experience of batting on their own field they know where the pockets are they know how big the area is they know you can run on arms and they take two more runs beyond you can't help to think how drop how, how costly that uh, drop catch could have been looking to the onside once again this time Sneeman settling for one and oh yeah, at this stage, definitely uh, the Limpopo and Paula's leaving quite a few runs out there already in the past nine overs. Quite a few misfields, quite a few twos being run to the fielders. And how costly will that job catch cost uh, yeah. turn out to be? Yeah, you just feel that's the type of uh, chance 
Jock Simon is actually going to provide you. He's not going to, he's not going to get bowled easily or, or you know, nick the ball. If it's going to be an opportunity, it's going to be a oh, tough catch. As we see another error in the field from the Impalas. That ball was struck straight to mid-wicket. Oh, excuse me, straight to extra cover. Misfielded for one run. Forrester takes one in the Knights. They 74 for two after 10. Quite interestingly, Mpopo and, and Palas, they were 75 for two after, after 10. So with only 10 overs to go, the match beautifully poised for exciting finish here. Yeah, look, it's 74 for two after 10. Jacques Neyman sitting at 43 at this stage. The equation, 103 needed of 60 balls. And uh, how costly will these misfields turn out to be in the end? You'd imagine the wicket of Jock Slamon being the big one and the prized one at this stage. If he bats through, it might prove to be quite costly for the Impalas. Uh, you would feel if, uh, if Jock Slamon bats through, this game will be done with three overs to spare. As far as he takes one to, uh, to long on, I totally agree, Vian. You know, if uh, Jock Slamon, if he gives you a chance, you want to be taking that opportunity as a... Uh, as he's currently in good form and he can hit, he can clear these big boundaries. That's the most dangerous part of his batting. Mulefe now from the Lock Logan end. Talks same on plays it conservatively to uh, to long on for one run. Same on a very dangerous batter. He's quite nicely poised on 44 at this stage. More than half the runs of the Itech Knights that has been scored has been off the blade of Jock Snyman. We'll leave it full and straight, quite flat as Forrest seeds it down the ground to long on to for one. Over nicely poised here, three runs with three balls. Very big three balls coming now here by Molefe. He'd like to Hit the stumps here. Yeah? Wouldn't like to leave the stumps. Yeah, well, oh, that's a terrific shot from Jock Simon. He punched it over extra cover uh, for two runs. The ball just sat a bit in the damp outfield, which is heavily irrigated because of the heat over the past two weeks here in Bluefontaine. Great shot there from Jock Simon for two runs. Simon now on 46. He's really batted well so far this innings. Let's Drag see. down. A lot of work to be done. Keep it wicked does well. It looks like square leg helps him out and he reels the ball back in. That takes him on to 48 now. Good work there on the left side boundary. He did drop it short there, Molefo, but that's the danger here. Batting second and on Mangung overall. The ball just skittling a bit low. Two runs there for Jock Simon. Punch down the ground airily. Looks like Funamava down there does the fielding. And interesting enough, he hasn't bowled so far. He's Daniel Funamava. Tall left arm seamer. And uh, that brings an end to the 11. The score now 82 for 2 after 11. Jock Snayman sitting at 49, not at this stage. The equation, 95 to win of 54 balls. And uh, you have to think the Impalas might be in a prime position here. As we see a change of bowling from the Willows end. It looks like Aldred Hawkins into the attack for his third. Captain Juan Arsbrook needing a quiet over or maybe a wicket over here. Bringing his strike bowler back. Will be Jock's name on will be on strike. The five fields outside the 30 yard circle. The third man sweep on the offside. Long off, long on. There's a deep square leg in place. Square leg slightly in front of squares. Hawker now continues to snap on. Nicely angled into the wicket and dropped into the offside for a single. 
And that takes Jock Sneeman to his half century. A very well compiled 50 of 38 balls by Sneeman. And uh, his side would really like for him to double up and go big here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well played again from Jock Sneeman. He's had a good season so far from the Knights, for the Knights. His role has been made specific and that's played towards his strength. So well done, Jock. But uh, as uh, Vian said, uh, the Knights, they would like him to go as deep as possible here for the Knights, as it can be difficult for incoming batters to score from the get-go. Forrester doing well, he's playing himself in, he's currently on 8 not out. As, uh, as the Knights continue their quest to uh, chase down 177 full and straight from uh, Auken. Oh, Jock Sneeman, he gave up. He, gave, he totally gave up on that single miscommunication from the batters. Jock Sneeman, he was far down the pitch. Another missed opportunity by the Limpopo Palas. You can't help to think it's that kind of opportunities that might win a game like today. As Hawken bowls the young Forrester clean, full and straight. Forrester, he tried to look and hit the ball over the vacant mid wicket area. Only three fielders out on the leg side, and Forrester missed that uh, ball on the stump. See the pass for eight runs from 11 balls. Important wicket for the Limpopo and Palas there as uh, it just brings the momentum of the match back into the favour of the Limpopo and Palas. The unforced he looked to try and access the mid wicket, uh, vacant uh, mid wicket area on the boundary. Well, ball from Aldred Hawken, and that brings uh, the new batter in Pat Buerta to the crease. Pat Buerta, very experienced. Uh, played a lot of his, a lot of his cricket here at Mangung Oval. The Knights will be happy to see him at the crease and uh, try and take the game through for the Knights and get them over the line. The Knights also trying to amplify the right hand left hand combination. It just brings in the variation, natural variation of uh, bad balls from bowlers. But so far, the Impala are safe, being quite disciplined. Uh, except for the first three overs from the power play. Further on, very tight net bowling. And uh, Pat Puerta, he's facing uh, his first ball here. Asselin and Pope and Paulus, they're clawing their, their way back into this game. Uh, Aldred Hawken really has been the difference so far in this game. Two and a half overs, one for six. Leaving the Itek Knights 83 for three. That's Puerta. Punches that one into the offside. But the misfield sees the ball go out towards the sweeper boundary. And uh, very experienced campaigner is Pat Buerta. The equation now 93 needed from 50 deliveries. And the required rate almost creeping up to 12s now. From an iTech Knights perspective, Jack Sneeman still at the crease. Walking, yeah. He's only bowling of a deep square and a long one on the leg side boundary. As Sneeman, he excessed that vacant mid wicket area I just spoke about. Very much what Dion Forrester tried to do. That was a bit shorter in length. And Jock Sneeman, he just punches it through or over, I would say, over mid wicket for a much needed boundary for the Knights. Yeah, much needed boundary there by the iTech Knights. One ball to come in this the 12th over. Walken. He bowls to Stamon who walks over again. He's trying to access the um, vacant mid wicket area. He does and he gets two runs. Good fielding there from Longhorn to cut it off. As uh, the Knights say on 90 runs. For the loss of three wickets after 12 overs, you would feel the Limpopo and Palas, they, uh, they wouldn't uh, 
go to the race at all uh, when uh, Jock Simon is still at the crease. As the Knights, they require, uh, they require, they are required to go at 11 runs and over to chase down this uh, 176 posted by Limpopo and Paulos. Other Knights now require 87 or 48 balls, so uh, 11 runs per over needed. And the two, these two batters like to get a partnership going now. Very difficult situation to come into bat now for Pat Berta with uh, 11 over needed and himself still needing to get himself in to this innings. It's going to take a good innings here from Berta. Lefe into his third over. Uh, standard uh, left arm orthodox field for a left hand batter. Vacant with wicket two points. Five fielders on the boundary as uh, Pat Puerta, he takes one too long off. Same field for the right-hander, vacant but wicket, two points. Mulefi bowling quite disciplined so far, flat at the stumps, conceding 17 runs of his uh, 2.1 overs as he goes now into Snayman. Snayman works it through the offside for one. Oh, he will be happy to keep Snayman off strike for as much as possible. Of course, bowling to a left-hand batter now in the form of Patrick Berta. Stock standard field now is now with wicket in place. Left and now over the wicket. Pat Berta, he gives himself a bit of room. It's it hard to long off. Only one run again. It's a bit of a quiet spell now. For the iTech Knights. Yeah, boundaries hard to come by as uh, Lam Pope and Paul are say, bowling very disciplined. It looked is like a chance taken? there. That look, is that, no, not taken at all. And is there not a dropped opportunity from the Lam Pope and Paul? It, it seemed like it drop catch at point, splice from the Dark Seaman. He bowls it quite tight again. Stayman happy to punch him down the ground to long off. Vian, that might have been another drop catch from the Paulas. Yeah, it did, look, it did look like it. Uh, the reaction tell, tells you a lot. And once again, a drop catch off the blade of Jacques Stayman. As Malefe now continues to Guerta. Guerta eats it all down the ground to long on. Only one run again, good over in this uh, this instance for Malefe. As he, uh, as he bowled uh, his three overs for 21 runs. I'd love to be a bug on the shoulder of one of those two night batters now to hear the conversation. 82 runs required now, 42 deliveries, 95 for three after 13. Jock Stamos sitting at 58, not out. And the ball seemingly a bit hot off his blade today. Limpopo and Paula say would hate to be on the bus ride back to uh, Paula Kwane and think about those two drop opportunities they gave Jock Stamos. And if that could have been the difference in today's match, as we see a bowling change here from the Willows end, it's. Uh, Daniel van der Merwe, he's a left arm seamer, quite handy, he bowls uh, with a standard offside field out in a long off sweeper and third man, short finest in the ring, only two leg side, bound, leg side field boundaries, boundary fielders. As van der Merwe, he bowls his first ball to Pat Puerta, that was wide, straight to sweep of, to one. A slight misfield once again in the entering by the Impalas. As uh, the single sees Jock's name on come back on strike and Daniel van der Merwe, he's been uh, one of the leading wicket takers for their side so far in this competition. Slightly late for him to come into the attack now, only bowling his first over in the 14th over of the match. Yeah, and it's a big time pressure over as well as uh, 
without a doubt, I think the Knights will try and target this over. As uh, Van der Merwe is bowling his first over, he's quite cold into this contest. Only bowling the 14th over as his first over. The Knights will see this as an opportunity to score. Van der Merwe to uh, Snyman. Snyman knocks it into the leg side. He's happy with one run. That's good bowling so far by Van der Merwe. Two balls, two runs so far. Van der Merwe, of course, being the seventh bowler used so far by the Limpopo Impalas. And the rate required now up to 12 and over. And uh, edging on dangerous ter territory here for the ITEC Knights. The required rate getting a bit higher as put on our strike. Short day from Van der Merwe. Pat Puerta, he just uh, spliced it uh, over mid-wicket. There's only two legside boundary fielders in long on and a deep square. He tried to uh, utilize that pocket over mid-wicket and he gets two runs there. Van der Merwe, he's going to need to stay outside off here as uh, the scoring opportunity is over and through the legside. Outside off, well bowled. Base off from Van der Merwe. Pat Puerta, he takes one too long off. Score just crept up to 100 runs now. The Knights are 100 runs for free after 13.4 overs in a chase of 176 posted. After the Knights send it, uh, Limpopo into bat. Uh, Jock Simon is still at the crease. He's at 59, not out. Trying to take his team home. For the matter of a, he's bowling the 14th over, two balls to go. Great delivery, pace off. Left hand, he cuts it away from the right hand. This time can only manage one on that occasion. A good piece of bowling there by Fanamarva. Bowling his off cutters across the right hand, the jocks. Neyman has really been an impressive over so far. One more to come. He's gone for six runs so far. And I would imagine Huerta is probably going to go hard at this last one. Yeah, so we just saw a field change. Ferdman is up into the ring. As Cal Corner, Smith Wicket, he's out on the boundary. Do you feel this is a very big delivery in the context of the match? Wide down leg as Pat Puerta, oh, and the keeper also missed it. So that's two wides. Yeah, cheer from the crowd for the batters to try and run two on that occasion. Anyway, Pat Puerta, he walked across looking for the paddle over short fine. Now we've got Sleiman on strike. Unnecessary miss there from the keeper. You would feel this will be pace off as well, away from the right-hander. Third man up into the ring for Sleiman as well. Yes, Van der Merwe. Well ball. Swings hard down the ground. Pace off again. I must say this Bowling performance, very good so far from the ballers. It's a nice, they require 73 from six overs. What I really enjoy so far from the ballers is the seamers are not afraid to take the pace off. And they bowl nice and tight at the stumps, bringing the odd ball that stays low into play. As the Knights, they've got a challenge up their hands here, uh, needing to go at. 12s now for the last six. Molefe, he's going to bowl through. He's bowling his last over from the Lock Logan end. Yeah, look at this stage 104 for three after 14. I can't imagine it becoming much easier than this. It's uh, 12 required, but Adebe is still with two overs to come, and he's been good so far. Hawken has one left as well. And then you imagine Van der Merwe might bowl a few now. I think this might and probably is the last over of spin for Adebe. Hawken and uh, Van der Merwe will take over. Sneeman comes down. down. Trees. Hits it out towards the offside fence. Only one. Pressure starting to build now on the Itech Knights batters. Yeah, Molefe, he keeps it simple. He doesn't leave the stumps. Really bowled a bad ball in his spell so far. As uh, we've got a general field out without him at wicket. Five fielders on the boundary for Pat Puerta. 
bat. He slot sweeps it. He middle that one. That six into the advertising board. That was needed. Good shots from Pat Bertha. He walked across, slot sweep with the spin towards the big boundary. Doesn't matter for Pat if he middles it. Went slightly with the breeze. Six runs for the Knights. Now an excellent shot by Pat Bertha. And uh, I'd imagine he's, he's looking to take Molefe down this over. No, it looks like I won't be surprised if he tries another big shot here. Molefe well bowled into the wicket. Doesn't give uh, Pat Bota any time to come down towards the ball. That was well bowled. Halfway through this over. Mulefe, oh, back down the crease. It's good bowling so far by Mulefe. He's been put under pressure by Bota. He really has reacted nicely. Two balls to come now. Fast and into the deck. It's oh. hit out towards deep square leg. And the fielder not being on the boundary, it's over his head for four. And a real coach killer by the fielding side. Impalas really have not been the best in the field so far. Their batting and bowling has been really good fielding wise. A few shortcomings so far and you really have to say a schoolboy area in the deep there, are you? Yeah, that, it goes down as a boundary, but in true honesty, that goes down as an opportunity. And as a wicket lost, a uh, wicket opportunity lost for the Limpopo and Paulas. Great scheme of things uh, that might play a big role in the result of this match. Last ball from Lefe from the Lock Logan end. Pat Bota down the crease, well hit but well fielded of his own bowling. Yeah, Vian, that is a schoolboy error. It's with the wind. You want to be having your best fielders on the lakeside boundary. Even if it takes a bit more time to set your field. That's against the sun, against the wind. Pat Boatown strike, the ball is turning in. The opportunity definitely lies towards the lakeside boundary and the fielder unaware on that occasion. He overran the ball, the ball went over his head, one bounce four. And instead of having an actual wicket, bringing a new batter into the crease who, can, you, who you can squeeze a bit of dots towards, it's a boundary and more momentum towards the Knights side. As uh, Aldred Orkin, he's going to bowl out quite surprisingly, the best bowler by four. He's going to bowl his fourth and last over from the Willows end. As the match is now uh, bowling up towards more and more pressure. An exciting finish to go towards as the Knights. They require another 62 runs or 50 balls. Oh, oh yeah, look, if you look at the bigger picture, they were 111. Nelson once again giving the opportunity. Put down, and it goes for four. As Hawker now continues. Hit hard down towards long off. But of a fumble, keeps it to one. But if you look at it, both the batters out there have been dropped already. So 115 for three could have been probably, 100, let's say, 115 for five. Yeah, it's quite disappointing on, at this level. Gordon Parsons, he'll, he'll be suing there at, uh, in the change rooms a couple of obscured words, but they're still in this contest though, and a wicked year, you know, that puts the Knights under a heaps amount of pressure as uh, umpires look at the ball. Look, I, with all that's going on and all the mishaps in the field, Lampopo and Paulas are well and truly in control of this match. No, definitely they are. They just take a step back, take a breather. Think of what's required now. There's an offside field placed with a third man sweep and long off. Cow corner and long on. Walking to Pat Bota. He swings and miss. Great delivery. That's why the field is set that way for the off cutter that goes away from the left hander. Only two left side uh, boundary fielders forcing Pat Bota to try and Play the ball over or through square leg. That's going to be difficult with the off cutter going away from the left hand. And I think by the looks of this field, that might be the play for the rest of the over. As Aldred Walken, he's bowling the third ball off the 16th. Again, off cutter, pace off, well bowled. 
good fielding in the covers. And uh, yeah, 16th over now, Eldon Hawken. He's halfway through the 16th. Four overs to come after this. I, I'd imagine two of them being Radebe and two of them probably Van Amerwe. Maybe one to Van Amerwe, one to Haasbroek if you want to throw a big gamble in there. But definitely I'd, I'd imagine two of those four going to Radebe. Yeah, I totally agree. What I just like again, I'm going to mention it again, it just feels like the Limpopo and Palas, they're using the dimensions of the field pretty well as seamers. And by doing that, they're taking the pace off their deliveries. So they're forcing the batter to generate pace to try and score a big boundary as uh, Hawken pace off towards the leg side boundary. That's not a good field set at all, Vian. Why would you have a third man out? No deep square out. Uh, uh, and the ball just literally pass square leg for a boundary there. Yeah, if you look at the match so far, how many edges have we seen through third man so far in this match? I can't remember one. Having third man back, maybe not necessary at this stage, but nonetheless, inside half of the bat going past short fine leg and square leg for four and four. Desperate runs there for the iTech Knights. Jock's name are now on 67, not out. Two balls to come in this. Pace off again, well weighted from Sneiman. He takes one bounce too long on, and it's only one run scored. Yeah, Vian, it's small things like that that can cost you in a match like, like today. You know, if, you, if your ploy is pace off, the ball's generally not going to go behind square on the offside. The ball might go because it's cutting into the leg side to the leg side boundary. You want to protect that for the right hand better. And uh, that field setting there didn't make any sense at all. As this is the last ball from Hawken to Pat Buerta uh, in the 16th over. Well bowled. An excellent way to finish out the 16th by Aldred Hawken. The score now 122 for 3 as we see some running repairs coming on for the Knights. And the equation now 55 needed of 24 and uh, the rate required now close to 14 per over the game all but one still by the Limpopo Impalas and the Knights will feel as long as Jock Snayman is out there this game is not over yet. Yeah that was well ball from Hawke and Pat Puerta he's not a comfortable paddler off the ball fast and straight just missed off stump and he had a very good spell of bowling going o conceding only 20 runs in his four overs also taking the wicket of Dion Forrester as uh, Don Radebe he's back into the attack as uh, the match is really heating up now Don Radebe is bowling from the Lock Logan end as uh, the Knights are requiring another 55 runs of 24 balls Vian you really uh, you can really feel the match building up now towards a tense finish. Yeah, it's now Radebe back into the attack and huge over in the game this. Radebe's second last over and he has really been a match winner so far for the Impalas. Full and straight, that's well played by Jacques Snyman. We saw this against the match against SWD. Uh, short finest into the, up into the ring. Snyman goes down for the paddle. He shows that he has that also in his artillery artil and not only the, the power game, so brilliantly executed here by Jock Simon. Yeah, if you were to put fine leg back, which fielder would you be willing to bring up? Maybe a sweep on the offside if he's going that straight? That's a great point, uh, Vian. As we see the second delivery of the seventh, he goes for the paddle again, wide down the leg side. Yeah, it's a difficult one, don't you, uh, Vian? Because you feel like this is the correct field set for Jock Simon's game because he is a power hitter. But if this is the ploy set and this is the ball that's going to be bowled, you feel like Jock can execute the paddle as well. I would feel it's probably sweeper as, uh, as he's going to need to cramp him for space, have all the offside fielders inside the ring, in, and that's what they're going to do. But it looks like they're bringing deep square up. A deep square leg being brought up. Uh, I'm not too sure about this one. Oh, it's, a, it's an area where Jacques Neman scores a lot. He likes to pick the ball up off his off leg stump. Yeah, it just nullifies your if you take pace off. Missed out there, Jacques Neman. 
that was his low full toss deep squares up into the pads. Really missed out on that one there that uh, Jock Snyman. 49 now required of 22. And uh, Snyman sitting nicely on 72. Berta has been a good foil for him so far. He is on 19. And uh, the ITEC Knights need a big over here. They need an over of 20, 22 to keep them in the match here. Yeah, well, as we see the field set here uh, for Pat Puerta. Uh, that is a general spinners field actually. Oh, on the stumps again. Don Radebe, he balls Patrick Puerta clean. Off stump, out of the ground. Really, really impressed with how simple Don Radebe keeps his bowling. And he takes a very important wicket off uh, Pat Puerta. He departs for 19 runs off 16 balls. And uh, this chase is becoming all more difficult now for the Knights. Yeah, Don Radebe has been good. He's, all the wickets that have fallen so far being clean bowled. And I don't think necessarily that's something to do with the wicket. I think the bowling plans have been simple. I think Radebe is a quite a skiddy customer. I don't think it's, it's easy to get underneath his deliveries to get the ball to go the aerial route. I think he's a difficult customer to get away. And, uh, and he's kept it simple. I think uh, the call has been keep it simple. And he's bowled brilliantly. Two and a half overs, three for 15. And uh, with an over and a half to go and the slog being on, he might be in the mix for a few more sticks here. No, I totally agree, Bian. Uh, again, just you know, really impressed with how simple they keep it. On a big ground like this, you don't want to give whiff. He's just been hitting the stumps. The odd variation from there and taking pace off. And a very much uh, attitude of, if, if you miss, I hit. And that's what you should be doing, especially if you're defending a score here at Mangaung Oval. Hit the stumps, leave it up to the batter to, to make the play. And that's exactly what Don Rodebe has been doing. As uh, the new batter to the crease, uh, Tian van Vieren, he's a big hitter of the ball. He faces his first ball. First ball, he punches out to the leg side boundary for two runs. Jock Simon, he needs to get back, and he does. That's good running by the Itech Knights. Snyman on 72. It's really been a lone hand so far for the Itech Knights. Van Fieren now doubling up on his first ball. He's a powerful striker of the ball as well. He's Tian Van Fieren, but they'll need a few long ones here to keep them in the match. 47 needed of 20 balls. Two more to come in this, the 17th. It's heaved away into the onside. Square leg does the tidying up. It leaves Chuck Snayman with one more to come in the over. Yeah, so we see a far leg go out to the boundary and deep square up. Just don't like that idea if you want to bowl your slower ball. Your slower ball is going to go over the head of square leg. And you want to cram Jock Snyman so you can bring your, your sweeper up, bowl it into his legs, have your legs out, fill this out. As we say that he bowled into the wicket, Snyman heaves it, mistimes it straight to cow corner for only one run. And now the Knights, they require 45 runs. Well bowled there from Don Radebe. 45 runs required from three overs. The Knights would feel uh, with Jock Simon at the crease anything is so possible, but Vian must say this is a tough ask from here. Yeah, the Knights would be to, to come out victorious in this game. It'll be a very nice century for, for Jock Simon. You have to feel it's, it's going to have to be him to do the bulk of the hitting here. As uh, the score now 132 for 4, 18 balls left in this encounter, 45 runs still needed. And Van Amara now in for his second over of the match. So definitely middle over or more death bowling specialist is Van Amara in the side for his left armors. He's right up there with the wicket takers in the competition as well so far. He's going to bowl to one of the most destructive batters around South African cricket now. It's Jock Snayman. He's sitting on 73. And they look to go big this over, are you? No, definitely. This is the over for the Knights to bring, him, bring themselves back into the game. Van Amara from the Willows end. Jock Simon splices it and he's out. Good catch from Ordnay Fenter. And you would feel that it might be the game for 
Philip Balper, Paul Us, good knock from Dark Snyman. 73 runs off, 54 balls. But he totally missed time that space off again from Daniel van der Merwe. The ball was stowed from Jacques Simon. Long off ran in 10 meters and took a good catch. Leon, all the more difficult now for the Knights to chase down the score as they are five down for 132 after 17 overs. Yeah, a good hand by Jacques Simon. He departs for 73. And van der Merwe showing all the spectators why he is in the side. A tall left arm Simo. Once again, looked like he cut that one across the right hand. It's Neyman. And uh, 132 for five now is the high tech Knights. Brings the skipper Aubrey Swanapool out to the middle. Swanapool, of course, being a good striker of the cricket ball as well. Hits, hits the ball in some interesting areas of the ground. But uh, 45 from 17 is going to take something special for the Knights to get over the line here. Yeah. Uh, I agree, Vian. Uh, Aubrey more than capable also of uh, dispatching a couple of boundaries here, but it's just a couple of stuff. Small things I enjoyed about the Limpopo and Paula's bowling attack, although they have used seven bowlers, you could see that all seven bowlers had a clear plan and they were very confident in executing it. And it might have even been as simple as just hitting the stumps and taking pace off from there. What I also enjoyed is that the captain, Ruan Osbrook, even fielding at Cal Corner, he guided these bowlers throughout the balls, throughout the overs, in between balls, in between wickets. He constantly, oh, as we see another wicket there, well bowled again from Daniel van der Merwe. Pace off. Aubrey Swanepoel totally mistiming that ball. Brilliantly bowled away from the leg side boundary. Well done to the Limpopo and Palas for another wicket. Yeah, the Impala's showing some clear plans here. It's been impressive. And uh, up front, we questioned why Hawken didn't go with a new ball, or David didn't come with a new ball. And uh, clear plans being set out. And you have to say it might have been the right decision to keep them back. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, Osbrook's been impressive as well as captain. He's been impressive all round, batting, bowling, fielding wise. But I think. The difference in this game might have been his captaincy. Yeah, it's, it's the, you know, again, a bowler, he, he enjoys, any bowler enjoys a clear plan uh, with a clear field set. And there was constant communication between Ruan Osbrook and his bowlers in between balls, in between wickets. You can see him even now back paddling towards scout corner. He's talking to his bowler, he's talking to his fielders, his inner ring fielders, they need to be on the ring or they need to be closer and that's that's the little things that can win tight games uh, especially especially in T20 matches again as you'll see here uh, new batter to the crease for the Knights is Isaac De Gale legs out boundaries uh, fielders is out towards a big boundary Daniel van der Merwe full toss on that occasion and De Gale he only takes one run 133 for 6 now. Halfway through the 18th. The score to avoid the, the bonus point, 140. You'd imagine the Knights should cross that. But in dangerous territory now is the ITEC Knights. Well, if you run and strike, uh, the Neil van der Merwe will look to pace off away from the batter as he does. Ball goes straight up. Oh, drop catch by extra cover. That's disappointing to see. That's basics, basics, basics. Letting uh, the fielder down on that occasion. The ball spent a lot of time up in the air. You need to get underneath the ball as quickly as possible for your eyes to settle. And the basic area of the fielder that they just jogged in the entire time, his eyes never settled. And uh, at the end of the day, he dropped the sitter. Seen at the pad by Van der Merwe. Of course, Dick Gale is a, is a top order batter or a recognized batter. And uh, very, very handy. Lower order down. It's Van der Merwe now. One more to come in this, the 18th over. 134 for 6. And uh, 
quite the amount of mishaps so far on the field by the Impalas but you have to compliment them on the bowling display so far yeah, from the matter of a last ball again pace off away from the right hander brilliantly bowled right over from the deal from the Merva. you might say that was over that won the game here for the Limpopo Impalas Although the whole bowling attack, you could see from the moment they took the ball into their hands, there was clear plans, clear field set, as well as, look, you can have your field set, but you need to know exactly what you're going to have, what you're going to bowl actually towards that field. But most importantly, you must have the confidence, the know-how, how to do it, and to go actually do it. And that's exactly what the Limpopo and Paulas has done in uh, the restriction of... Uh, 176 runs here against the Knights, as the Knights they require another 43 runs of 12 balls. Don Radebe, he's uh, continuing from the Lock Logan end. It's in the block holds, head out towards cover. Half, a, half stop sees him coming back for a second. It's going to 36 for 6. And Radebe, he'd be, he'll be eyeing a wicket or two. Oh, you can uh, pretty much, that's the thing. We all know what Don Rodebe is gonna, gonna provide here, but he does it well and he does it effectively. And uh, that's what makes him uh, successful as a uh, attempted war, uh, Yorker that goes down the leg side. Oh, the rate required now, 20, almost 22. And uh, the final nail almost in the coffin now for the Itech Knights. I'm fearing he's going to need to launch a couple of big ones here to keep them in the fight. Well, bowled again. Off cutter, base off. Nice and wide, away from the swinging arc of the batter. And another dot. I wonder if, uh, if we can draw stats back into this game and uh, do the comparison of the amount of base off deliveries bowled by the Limpopo and Pala Seamus in accordance towards the Knight Seamus. And bowled cleanly, Don Radebe, brilliant bowling, takes the wicket of Tian van Vieren, brilliant, well yeah. done. Radebe doing what Radebe does, um, just hitting the stumps, it's four wickets now for Don Radebe, all four of them clean bowled, making an awful mess of the stumps so far today. And the Eye Tech Knights now, 137 for seven. And uh, staring down the barrel of a rather hefty defeat here to the Limpopo Impalas on their own home ground. Yeah, very well bowled again from uh, Don Radebe. Hitting the stumps, base off again, ball just stays a bit low. And he clean bowls uh, Tian van Vieren as uh, that brings Dane Pitt uh, to the crease for the Knights. And uh, 40 runs required for the Knights of Nine Balls, you must say. Uh, this is uh, becoming a quite hefty victory for Fordel and Pope and Palas. They're going to finish up this game, traveling all the way to Bloom, Bloom per bus. Very pleased with their batting and bowling performance. Right there, but now halfway through, he's lost. Oh. The good Why shot that? out towards the offside. Looks like they're coming back for a second. It's good running by the iTech Knights. Looks like Dane Pitt, who is in the middle now for the iTech Knights. Two balls to go. Yeah, in the penultimate over for uh, Limpopo and Paulus. Don Rodebe from uh, the Lock Logan end. Holds it outside off as Pitt takes uh, one to the sweeper field on the boundary. Yeah, one ball to come now in this Don Radebe spell. His figures now 3.5 overs 4 for 25. It's impressive stop by the seamer from Limpopo. It's now the Khaled's on strike for the Itech Knights. Rodebe's last opportunity to take five. That's out. LBW and Don Rodebe takes a well-deserved five-wicket all 
Brilliant bowling by Don Radebe. De Gale not getting in position at all to play the paddle over the short fine. And a well deserved five wicket all by Don Radebe. Great spell of bowling, Dion. Yeah, Radebe has been impressive so far today. And uh, I'd imagine he's loose ahead now with the wicket takers in this competition. He was in second place alongside Daniel van der Merwe in seven wickets. He'll be sitting on 12 now. Yeah, five wickets for 25 runs in his four overs. Match defining uh, bowling spell, but with the support of Albert Hawken, who bowled his four overs for 20, that was very good. Mulefe, he went for his uh, 32 runs in four overs. He didn't bowl that badly, only conceding eight runs per over, as well as uh, Juan Asbrook, who went for 23 runs in his three overs, all playing a terrific part, as did Daniel van der Merwe, who only conceded 11 of two overs, and he took two wickets at a very crucial stage of the match, bowling, when the Knights was trying to push for victory towards the death overs. That's what you call a bowling unit. That's what you call a bowling unit applying pressure. Now the Knights now requiring 37 of the last six balls. As a word is being whispered there to the umpire by Captain Ron Asperg. Who now sees himself going out towards deep midwicket. It's Van Amara now to see out this innings. The Artec Knights, 140 for 8. Oh. It's beautifully guided through the backward point region by Dane Pitt, who is making batting look a lot easier than the rest of his lineup. It looks like he's batting on a different surface than all the other batters so far today. Now, oh, Pitt, he just guides that through uh, in between uh, backward point and short third man who's inside the ring, Daniel van der Merwe. He went for the pace on option at uh, that time. It just shows that it's easier to score with a third man up as they bring uh, Middolf up into the ring. Third man goes back out for the matter of a pace off again. Look at that. Cutter away from the batter. Well done, well bowled. Yeah, for the matter has been good. He's, I think he's been impressive with his cutters so far. And uh, the seam bowlers, especially for Limpopo and Palas, I think Hawk and Radebe. And Van Amara, they've been good. Yeah, very good. Uh, Van Amara also very good. Being aware that the right hand batter would like to hit him to the leg side boundary, keeps on taking the ball away from them with his off cutter, space off again. Hard into the wicket. Don't pity, only takes one too long on. Let's me think Daniel Van Amara with a bowl in England, George Garton, similar actions. Oh, slight sling in the action for Daniel van der Merwe. I can imagine he'll swing the ball a mile with the new ball. Back into the right hand, uh, of course. He looks very comfortable with this role in the back end. I was quite scared when he came in at a crucial time of the game. Came, into cold, came in cold into the contest. But he delivered magnificently at ball pitching outside leg, pace on delivery. As uh, sitting Billy Longa, he scampers through. Oh, now, 31 required now of two balls. The score 146 for eight for the iTech Knights. And really, the defining factor in this game probably should be Ron Asbrook's innings of 63. I think he made. I think that was definitely the difference so far today as we see Dane Pitt hit that one onto the embankment. It was a massive blow. Very impressive striking there by Dane Pitt. Yeah, Ruan Osbrook, uh, very good day out for him here in Bluefontein. Um, taking down a very strong uh, experienced outfit of the Art Tech Knights. He played a terrific knock. And uh, also, Vian, just uh, the unity of the bowling, bowling attack from the Limpopo and Palas. Uh, 
also think in chasing a score as we see Dane Pitt hits another boundary straight down the ground for four to conclude this encounter between the Attic Knights and the Limpopo Impalas uh, the Limpopo Impalas they are victorious on this occasion with I think they win by 20 runs here yeah? is the Limpopo yeah. Impalas win by 20 runs Impressive display of bowling by the Limpopo Impalas coming away from home to the probably favoured Hitech Knights leading the, the way in the Division 2. Limpopo Impalas not standing back and putting up an impressive display. Uh, that keeps them at the top of the table in the Division 2 T20 competition. Yeah, and rightly so, Bian, if. Uh, doesn't matter who you are, you need to play the conditions. And uh, the Le Pope and Paula stated way better today, especially in terms of bowling. They took pace off, they hit the stumps, a wicket was, uh, it was a good batting wicket, but there was some slight two-paced uh, factors in this wicket and they bowled straight at the stumps, pace off, they utilized the big boundaries and well done to Le Pope and Paula. Also, very crucial knock by uh, Ruan Harsbroek, who just changed the momentum and the energy of the innings and uh, posting a very competitive 176 and at, at the end the bowling performance of all bowlers from the Lipopo and Palas was impressive and uh, must go down as uh, Don Radebe, he's probably our man of the match with 5 wickets for 25 and 4 overs uh, brilliant spell of bowling yeah, That'll be an interesting one if they were to pick one between Radebe and, and Asprey, but I do think Radebe, four overs, five for 25, very impressive stuff from the Seema, and probably get my vote as well as the man of the match. From our side here in Bloemfontein, good game of cricket between the Limpopo and Paulas and the Itec Knights and Limpopo and Paulas coming out as the deserved winners of the contest from myself, Jan Duplessis and Aya van Wijk. Cheers.